Danish athletes in the top 10 as well. So we got three from Germany in the top eight. We got two from Denmark in the top eight. And we got two Frenchies in the top eight as well. So this is all action. They're all getting after the European Championship. You don't see anything else in there other than the European names right now. So you know that they want to get after this championship and take it home. As we see Nikki Barclay, who's in uh, second place right now, transition out to the run. <laughs> She looked really smooth and, you know, she made the decision to change. She felt it was going to be more comfortable and we talked a little bit, you know, the run's so uncomfortable anyway, you might as well make it as comfortable as you possible. But she, she looks quite relaxed and the other thing she was going to do was wear that ice headband as well because she knew it was going to be hot. So as she heads out on the run, we're going to head to a break shortly and then we're going to head back and see what's happening in the men's race to see if Boris Stein is still going to be there when we get back. The action's heating up on the main river here in Frankfurt as we see Nikki Bartlett second place in our women's race. Well, she lost 38 seconds in transition there by changing the clothes here today, McKeely. We talked a little bit about that. And why wouldn't you change into something that's comfortable losing a little bit of time in transition? to make it all back up out on course. We'll have to see how that goes. She was 6.02 coming into the transition area and 6.38 heading out. So a 30 second, 36 second deficit heading out onto the run course. So here we go with our uh, race leader right now. That is Boris Stein from uh, Germany. And we know that his counterpart from Germany, that would be Paul Schuster, is closing in. No, definitely Paul Schuster is, is looking really comfortable. But don't count out Dennis Shravot. He, you know, he's about, what, 25 seconds behind but running a very, very slightly faster pace than Schuster right now. Of course, Boris Stein is in the lead right now. Um, he's holding a lead of about 46 seconds when we checked in at 12.3 kilometres. Um, the other person to watch out for, I'm just scrolling through, you know, the other movements and shakers are about 2 minutes 47 back, so you got... Hokenhaag, who's 2.47. Nils from Hold is moving down the ladder. And then you've got Kevin Murrell, who was one of the, the chasers off the bike in that, that first group. He's at 4.08, so he's losing time. So when you, you look at who we're going to look out for, I think anyone in that one-and-a-half-minute range, you can't count out but I definitely think we'll see a lead change shortly where Paul Schuster is going to be our leader. Well, I haven't seen this in quite some time, McKeely, you know, inside of 12 uh, minutes when you've got six athletes um, all within two minutes, you know, running along the road there. That is Boris Stein, you know, our leader. Talk about Paul Schuster in second place at 46 seconds. Dennis Chavreau from France in third at 111. At 126 was Clement Mignon. Peterson was in fifth place at 137 and at 147 was Wilko Wiecki from Poland and then it was Hogenhaug who was at 247. From Hold is now slipped at 249 but eight guys all within three minutes at 12 kilometres into the run is a close race. It's a super close yeah. race and, and I mean that just shows you how the quality of, of the field is in Frankfurt. But you know, look, see the pass is going to come any minute now. 
Getting as, very close yeah, to the Yeah, very, very We've close. Got first and second here, McKeely, as we get back and uh, look at our other athletes just hopping off the bike in third place. We can tell you that our women's just in the top three hopping off the bike today. Blaymel leads Bartlett by 6.02. And in 13.33 is Catherine Grohman from Germany as well. So we got two Germans in there and Nikki Bartlett from the UK. So that's it in our women's race. But our men's race is getting very, very tight right now because we are just about set for a changeover in first and second places here. It looks like Paul Schuster from Germany is about to overtake his compatriot, his fellow German countryman, and go into first place. Yeah, you know, we just m missed that visual, but I know the guys will come back to it. Uh, it was, we sort of predicted that was going to happen because Paul Schuster was the one that was, you know, definitely moving quickest in that, that, that top three position. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, Dennis can catch up and really make it a race for uh, that top spot. Yeah, so in third place right now, we have to look at this young lady as she overruns the bags there. The helmet's still on there. We can see now that uh, Catherine Grohman is uh, just taking the helmet off. Let's see if she can get there. You know, pff, look, look at that. That. Nice. that was just super. She only took a third super. of a second to do that where she made up 15 seconds on her competition right there. Here on go the, uh, the fancy socks there. Time to get those hoka shoes on and run out of transition area like it never happened. But look at this. She's having a great transition right now. I think she's going to make up quite a bit of time on Nikki Bartlett in transition. However, she is around seven minutes down uh, at this point of time. So here we go. Look at that. That was a great transition. Do you agree? It was a fantastic transition. It really was. And how fun of her socks. That Loving is socks. fun, you know. Add a little bit of spice, a little bit well, of fun. How's this? How's the way that she's running out of transition? Yeah, she looks very, very comfortable, relaxed. Had a nice cadence straight away. Didn't even look like she rode 112 miles. I know it. So definitely, you know, those socks must have been the extra motivation. But, you know, that's what's cool, right? That little, that little bit of uh, personality that you see shining through. A little bit of a tailwind puffing them out of town here as they head out onto the laps there. There we go. We can see that in our third place in our women's division right now, Catherine Grohman from Germany is out there in third place running along the River Main. And you can see that the crowds are now building out there. Well over 20,000 in and around town here at this point in time. You know that there's going to be almost that amount of people hanging around the Roma Platz all the way from about 3 o'clock this afternoon to the midnight hour. One of the most fun party atmosphere finish lines that you will ever see on the Ironman circuit. I've been there and here and uh, to witness it many, many times. It's loud. It's a party atmosphere. And, uh, yep, the dance music comes out, that's for sure. Well, you know, just the crowd support. You don't even need da dance music when you've got people <laughs> screaming and cheering for you. I mean, this is what this course is is all about. And, and even though, you know, as an athlete, particularly a professional athlete, you sort of zone that stuff out, you sort of like, it's sort of there subconsciously as well that, you know, you, you, you do still use that energy of the crowd, even though you're so focused in the moment of what you're doing and concentrating on putting one foot in front of the other, making sure that, you know, you're staying relaxed, make sure you're, you're driving from the hip, making sure that, you know, you're using the aid stations, you sort of get in that, that moment. And, that's one of the hardest things when you're actually running an Ironman marathon. How do you get out of that, that pace when you, when you need to catch up or, or you're trying to chase someone down? Like we, we see right now is uh, Paul Schuster is getting one step closer and closer. And, you know, it doesn't seem like it's a huge gap, but that's going to still take several miles to close down. I mean, it, it, it was uh, 30 seconds at our last check and now it's probably about 10 seconds. And that move is going to take a little bit longer because when you look at their pacing, it's not really this huge drop from either one of the guys. You've just got Paul Schuster who's steadily running a little bit faster and that's why this, if we see an exchange soon, it's still going to take a few miles to happen. Yeah, look at the, um, the the stride lengths of these two. They're, they're both very tall athletes, but um, let's just take a look at this Paul Schuster and Boris Stein right here. This is um, 
how it happened just a moment ago. Paul Schuster comes up onto the side of uh, Boris Stein, and look at that, just uh, right there. And uh, you can see the different uh, styles in the stride lengths. Boris, you've got bounding capacities there, nice long stride length, but he's bounding up and down. Paul Schuster is more about getting the knee drive, McKeely, pushing those arms forward, whereas, um, you know, Boris is a little bit, you know, from side to side with rocking of yeah, the carriage foot, up on top. Yeah, that foot strike is very, very different yeah. between both of them. Paul Schuster tends to be a little bit more natural, where Boris has a little bit of more roll from the toe. He sort of lands to the inside, to the out, and, you know, and he does. I think that's why he gets that little bit extra bounce, Greg. Well, bouncing, you're talking about kangaroos or you're talking about running <laughs> along the mine because Oceana Ironman, take a look at this. Experience a whole new world of racing in New Zealand and Australia. Tow the line in Topor at the Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironman New Zealand. Soak up 35 years of history in the national storage Ironman Australia. Race in paradise at the Cairns Airport Ironman Cairns. Or chase a Kona slot at the GWM Ironman Western Australia. So when you're planning your season, why not head down under and race Oceania style? Greg, you'll get to see some koala bears, some kangaroos, some good chocolate, good Aussie hospitality. Well, he said, you know, in the voiceover, you know, there was, uh, he said, why don't you head on down to uh, Oceana Ironman? I was like, why don't you hop on down there? That would be more <laughs> appropriate, just like this guy right now. And that is our race leader, Paul Schuster. Yep, he's never been in this position before in Frankfurt. And right now, he's showing everybody else what to do around this course. We're only in the second lap of the marathon run course. Let's go over and have a look at our Morton moves in the transition here. That was Daniela Blamel. She was at 5.32, and it was 32 seconds faster than, yeah, Gromart. So we knew that that was going to happen because she had a really good transition. Nikki Bartlett decided to go into the changing area and, you know, regard, disregard all the kit and go again and, you know, start from, from scratch, which is, hey, if it's the way that makes you comfortable and, uh, you know, get yourself through these races, well, all better to you. Looks like Christian Hogenhaug now has uh, made his way back through the field and uh, running up into uh, into a, a decent position here. But uh, let me check on that one because now it looks like Boris Stein has just gone back into the other position. But uh, this uh, might have been Clement there. I think it might be uh, uh, Clement Mignon actually is uh, looking like he's coming back into the fray. No, he looks very, very comfortable. He you know, his turnover is a little bit quicker than uh, Boris Stein's. And, I mean, Boris Stein isn't running slow. It's just these guys are just consistently just putting a little bit more pressure on him. And that's why you're seeing all these passes because these guys were spread very thinly. And, you know, it's like it wouldn't take much for these changes to happen. So now when we look at the front end of the race, who is going to get stronger? That's where our champion is going to come from. Who can make that move and continue to make that move and continue just to put the pressure on that like, hey, I'm just going to run that little bit faster. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to make sure that you have no chance to have any parts of the race where you go downhill. Well, Germany won and Germany three, but it's a Frenchman that slipped into second place right now in the Ironman European Championship. Things are heating up. Don't go away. That's a hyperbole. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hyperbole from Hyper Ice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. 
The action continues along the River Main here on the second lap of the men's run course here, the professional division. This is also acting as the Ironman European Championship on the men's pro section here. They've got three race spots to claim for the Ironman World Championship coming on October 8th later this year as we return to the Big Island of Hawaii for the Ironman World Championship. And that is going to be a welcome return, not only to all the fantastic fans of the Ironman World Championship, but the athletes that qualified in 2019, 20 and 21. They will be all excited to get their opportunity to head back. But for this young man, a qualifying slot and a European Championship is just exactly what the doctor ordered. And there's one of those puns again, Greg. <laughs> no, I like it. Definitely you have lots of them. But, you know, when you start analysing the run, it's like everyone's slightly different. You know, it's like the athlete that we were just on. This is Paul Schuster, who was in the lead, but is gradually moving down the field rather than keeping that lead. You know, he still looks very, very comfortable. He looks relaxed. Definitely the foot strike is inside to outside. Just not moving as fast as um, our leader right now, and that's Paul Schuster, which we see right now. You know, he just looks comfortable. He looks really good at this point of the race. And uh, again, you know, looking down at the watch there and, you know, the Wahoo element will give you everything you need to know about what you're doing all day long. It's rock steady, heart rate. It's got everything that you need in a training watch for sure. And I'm looking down at mine right now and my heart rate 62. Got 79% battery life left, and that's been there for about a week. I mean, it's incredible. The battery life, the battery life is, is really is good. nuts. It's insane. Uh, as we look now, uh, Paul, he's still looking pretty good. He's been fairly stoic. You know, his, uh, his look on his face, he hasn't changed that too much whatsoever. He's taken the sunglasses off. He's inside that canopy of trees. The sunglasses might go on when he goes over the bridge to the other side where, you know, there's less uh, respite. You know, there's no, uh, no tree covering like there is on this this side of the main for sure, as we see him now. But he is uh, he's extending his lead, but he's got competition, you know, back there. And they are interested in winning this Ironman European Championship as well. So there's never a ch never an opportunity to, to let up. You know, they can always uh, turn around at this course. They will look on the other side of the road and see exactly where their competition is, whether that's good or bad. Yeah, well, we talked about that. You know, it could be a good thing. It could be a, a bad thing just based on, I think, your mental aptitude at the, at the time. It's like if you're the, in the lead and you're feeling strong and, you know, you, you're moving faster than everyone else, you're going to be like, yeah. You know, but if, if you're like saying, uh-oh, I'm losing time, you know, it's like, are you going to use that to your advantage by, come on, i got to push myself more. Or it's like, I got nothing. This is all I have today. And that tends to happen in an Ironman marathon that you can get, you sort of start out and you sort of stuck, get stuck in that pace and it's very, very hard to change it because it takes such a big effort to change that pace. The, the body definitely likes to be in a, a state of steady state anyway. That's why I always find like when people go, I don't want to do intervals because, you know, it is, is quite hard to get from that steady state to to like way, 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 way above threshold. Yeah, so he was just uh, gesturing to the person holding the hose there that he did want to be sprayed down and uh, it is certainly heating up. You can see some of those, uh, you know, cumulus clouds, uh, you know, starting to uh, puff up in the sky there. So it was predicted, you know, according to the forecast to get some light showers in the afternoon. Maybe it'll happen in the later hours, but uh, it is starting to build overhead for sure. Okay, we can see the Paul Schuster. I tell you what, anytime you've got Sebastian Kinler, you know, on a bike anywhere close to you, you want to be running good because number one, Sebastian's not retired yet. And number two, he wants to show Sebastian just how good he is running and that he's a threat, you know, in the future. So just getting a good look at that replay again, going back through the uh, the hose there. That was really nice on that super slow-mo shot. Thank you very much to our replay operators out there in the, uh, in the production unit. So thank you very much for that. So Paul Schuster, he is on fire right now. He is And look who's right behind him. Lap. Look who's right behind oh, I him. I know. It's going to happen. It, it's uh, 12 seconds right now at 18.2 kilometres. So we have Dennis, Dennis 
Dennis Ch Chavreau, he's, Chavreau uh, right behind, yep. right behind. You can actually get a little glimpse of him right there. And um, how is Boris Stein, uh, sorry, how is Paul Schuster going to know somebody's getting closer? The crowd. Well, the crowd, the crowd is also, like a nice little hint. Yeah, and then also, uh, look who else is coming. Wilko Wiecki from uh, from Poland as well is now, you know, into this uh, into the fray of things as well. So we've got a race this. on our hands, Greg. We've got, we got a, a race, race on, on our hands, just like last year, just like last year. And uh, now he was saying, "No, do not spray me. I don't want that hose on me today. Thank you very much. All the same, I don't want my shoes to fill up with water." Dennis Shabro denies the opportunity to cool his body down. But you can see he's got one of those sponges, you know, just stuck in the back of his shirt there, one down the front there, and that's how he's, you know, um, just keeping his, you know, the the, the, the temperate uh, area uh, intact. All right, so Genesau uh, Chavro as he's making his way toward the front there. It was Germany, Germany, France, France, and now it is Germany, France. That's going to change, perhaps. France is going to overtake Germany. And what about uh, Wilka Wiecki here from Poland? He He's doing a great job as he's making his way through the field as well. So Schuster feeling the pressure from Chavreau, the Frenchman. Not only that, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see as these three guys, like you see the pass happening right now, one of the athletes. But these three guys are running very similar. So if they can sort of get the momentum and get even closer, it's going to be a race, Welchie. It's going to be a race. Yeah, therefore we, we might can... We might be having a sprint finish again. <laughs> That's right. So uh, we can see that, um, right, you know, right behind Paul Schuster, there is a, a lapped athlete. So on the first uh, of the loops there, and then right behind that, is Dennis Chavro. So uh, three athletes in there, but that's only the top two in our competition right now. But get you caught up to speed here in the first uh, six athletes. They are all coveted with, uh, sorry, covered with only one minute and 27 seconds that's separating our athletes. They are all running at either a 343 or a 351 pace. So in between that, there's a second seven, uh, second, uh, sorry, seven second uh, change, you know, in our top six athletes there that are running those average speeds at this point in time. So very, very even race happening. And boy, boy, we've had some lead changes today, haven't we? And we've got more to come. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, this is tight. When you got three guys over a 30 second span, that just shows you how tight it is. And the advantage right now is those two athletes behind. Because the first thing they're gonna sight is the mountain bikes. You know, that'll be your first sight point. They're very easy to see, particularly if you get some lapped athletes, as these guys are on lap number two. So you, you see it, it's getting closer and closer. And then you look back and you see the third place. And again, it's like the second place, it's to their benefit. And then the third place, it's to their benefit because the first guy isn't gonna look around. He has to rely on the spectators, so he'll hear them like, say maybe you're in first, second is right behind you, third's right there, or you'll hear cheering right behind you. They're sort of the little signals that you get that you don't have to check in. And as Greg mentioned earlier, you can check in on this course because there's a couple of U-turn points. Um, you can look across and see when you make the turn to go on the other side. So there's lots of little things that you can do to see how close somebody is. But yeah, this is a tight race with like, well, for one, we've got three athletes right there. And then we've got six athletes in that minute and a half. Well, they're uh, closing in on the end of the second lap and then they'll have two more as they head toward the Romerberg and the Romerplatz. And so Romerberg is a public space in Frankfurt, Germany, uh, and, you know, located right there at the finish line. It's located in front of the Roma building complex, the seat of the Frankfurt City Administration ever since the 15th century. As a site uh, of numerous imperial coronations, trade fairs, Christmas markets, the square is a historic heart of the medieval Ulster, which is Old Town. And today... 
it is still a very popular tourist destination. It's going to be very popular for one of these two athletes if they can make it to the finish line first. But look at this. Dennis Chavro is closing in. Look at this. He's closing. Oh, I tell you what, at a rate of knots. Look at that. He's up on the toes and just like getting it done today. We mentioned early in the show today that Dennis Chavro would be one to watch on the run. We didn't know it was going to be this fast. We didn't know it was going to be this quick. But now he is chasing Paul Schuster, the German who does so desperately wants to be the next German champion here in Frankfurt. But the Frenchman, on a day where Ironman Nice is happening in the south of France, he has decided to come here and challenge the Ironman European Championship. And it may be a day that he may never, ever forget. But right now, Paul Schuster is giving it a fight. He is up onto the bridge and just about to come around for two laps to go. But look, now the gap is down to seven metres. It's down to six metres. It's almost going to dissipate on the other side of the bridge will it be done or will it be done in the halfway mark it's it's gonna happen that's for sure <laughs> and you know this is exactly where dennis wanted to be he wanted to be right up there in the front and he was off the bike and then like a strong run and that's exactly what he's doing but look look one, two, three. Well, you can right see there. you can see that the turnover of uh, our leader Paul Schuster has sort of gone down just a touch. I don't think he's going to give it too much of a fight here, but Chevro is going to put in a little bit of a surge, and just like that, as they approach that 21-kilometre marker, it goes from Germany to France, and a new leader in our competition for the very first time today. Dennis Chevro goes to the front of the group. Paul Schuster comes back up onto the shoulder and says. Not so quickly, mister. I'm not going to give up this one without a fight. And there they go, just like that. It is the German that goes back in front. Chevro has the inside line. They're going to race this thing. Oh, back to the right-hand side. This is going back and forth. But Chevro, you know he's got the foot speed. Now they hit the all-important aid station before heading out on that third lap today. But there goes the surge. And just like that, Chevro says, I want the lead. No, he, de he definitely wanted to make a move. You know, you saw when he got really close, he definitely accelerated. And then you had that little bit of a technical section down from the bridge down to back uh, along the waterfront. And, you know, we got to the aid station and uh, Dennis was like, you know what, I'm going to show you, I'm going to make a gap <laughs> and, and make you chase me now. So... This is another lead change for the men's race. So exciting to see so many lead changes. They may not be thinking that, but like as we watch, you know, it is so exciting to see how many leaders we, we've had today. And Dennis is looking strong. You know, he has good turnover. I like how his arms are swinging. And I'm excited, Greg, to see what happens when we get back after this little one minute break. This is a captivating race, that's for sure. We are glued to our seasons. We've had one lead change after the next, both in our women's race and our men's races today here at the Minova Ironman Frankfurt, the European Championship for our men. And this is Paul Schuster on screen in second place today. They were drawing the tangents coming off the bridge. It was him in first place. Then it was Dennis Chavro from France. They were inside lines and it went back to Paul Schuster, but then finally Chavro broke it. He just 
just absolutely took off like a bull at a gate through the aid stations. He got the Gatorade Endurance Formula. He whacked that into the belly there, and he goes Chevro now. The crowds are building on the River Main as we go through the second lap of the run course today. We are heading out for the third lap, coming up to the 21-kilometre marker, and we are just moments away from seeing that happen right now. We sure are, Greg. We've got three athletes right now battling it out for that European Championship here in, in Frankfurt as we see Paul Schuster coming around in second place. And then third is coming around shortly. He's only like, I think, 10 or 20 seconds back right now. Well, we're going to see three athletes in the same straight here coming up pretty soon because Dennis Chavro now leads by nine seconds over Paul Schuster. But Wilko Miecki from Poland is really rocketing to the front of this race as well. He's aiming for a podium spot in the Ironman European Championship on the men's side today. And Wilko Miecki from Poland is yet to come through our timing, Matt. But the last time was 37 seconds we'll have to see exactly where they are right now so 42 seconds he's lost five seconds on our two athletes here but I put that down to the surge and the little yes. bit of going back and forth between Schuster and our leader right here Dennis Chabro of France so you can see the second bike there that is Sebastian Kindler he is now you know commentating for ARD the local German channel covering this race today so great to have him down there expert commentary happening on local German TV but as Dennis Chavro, he is accelerating through the second part of the marathon course here. Has he gone too early? Has he put in too many surges? It doesn't look like it right now. As if he stays on his nutrition track, he should be good to go. Paul Schuster in second place. So it is now France from Germany and Poland in the Ironman European Championship men's pro division. Super exciting to Super. see so many talented athletes racing today but uh chevro just looks so good right now and you know it's always interesting when an athlete comes up to another athlete you know what that tactic is gonna gonna be it's like sometimes like i'm just gonna hang here and have a little rest and then sometimes it's like i'm gonna show you i'm gonna attack you i want to put as much time as i can in you can and then sometimes it's just a battle a battle of like you know what, you caught up to me, I'm not gonna let you go. Look at the turnover right now at Dennis Chavro. Look at that, it's just a thing of beauty, right? You got that beautiful arm carriage out there and uh, don't know what that gesture was all about, but he's got beautiful biomechanics happening at this point in time. And, uh, you know, just looking back to Paul Schuster, it just looks like Paul's um, turnover has slowed just a little bit. He still looked great, but it just, it's just, you know, the guy that was on screen just a moment ago, Chevro, was just absolutely sensational. And now we, you know, looking back at the uh, next couple of athletes to be coming through on their laps as well. So uh, I tell you what, this is our uh, this is our athlete from uh, the Netherlands. I, no, not from the Netherlands. That is, um, oh gosh, Poland. Poland. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm just losing it right here. That's Wilko Wiecki right now, moving up into third place. And uh, look at his stride We're there. gonna McKinney see another runs... move. We're gonna see another move. Yeah, we're gonna see another move, but look at this. He runs completely different than the other two athletes. He's like really muscling those legs and the upper body. So more of a muscular, like uh, a forceful runner. Yeah, and that's the thing about triathlon. You know, there's definitely different body types and th that run, isn't always about being pretty. It's definitely about being strong. You know, it's like you have to be strong. I mean, it is getting down now that, you know, if, if you're gonna run like a 235 off the bike, you have to be fast too. But generally in an Ironman, you know, it's about strength running. That's why you go out and you do a lot of training on the hills. You know, you're, you're not just t toughening them up with the ups and downs, cause you know, the quads do take a beating in a marathon, particularly an Ironman marathon. But, you know, it's that strength component because when you get off the bike, you know, you have such a huge level of fatigue. You're trying to train your body to continuously run with fatigue. And that's where sometimes like a runner struggles to come across to triathlon. You know, definitely a talented runner is, is going to do well. But sometimes the fact that they're running with heavy legs, they're not used to that feeling. Sometimes it takes them a while to, to get that run feel 
into triathlon. And then you have some other runners that they may not be the speediest runner out there, but they can run really, really fast off the bike. And yeah. that comes down to like having that ability to run with that level of fatigue. Yeah, it just looks like um, now, you know, Schuster's, you know, definitely feeling a little bit of fatigue coming in there, just gesturing that he's got a bit of a side stitch happening at the same time. So that may be a, a result of why, you know, a little bit of a slowing in the pace or a little bit of a, you know, shortening in the stride there because he was pulling at those uh, ribs on the left-hand side. So wouldn't be at all surprised if, you know, something gastro uh, internally, um, uh, intestinally is happening internally. That's what I meant to say, but I'm trying to get too many words out in one little sentence there. But as he goes through the uh, aid station there, just getting that um, water, he's putting Gatorade <laughs> over his body. He's putting everything. It is getting warm out there. It's 28 degrees Celsius right now. Yep, it has just moved into the 81 degree Fahrenheit zone right there. So we do know it's going to uh, be a nice and humid afternoon. Look at that. They're just trying to get everything in, everything over the body. And uh, Schuster is really feeling the heat. He felt it from Dennis Chavreau, and now he's feeling it from up above. Definitely it's hot. I mean, you just have to look how much water is on the ground at those aid stations. They're really taking full advantage of the sponges. I mean, you'll see athletes that will actually carry them, put them down the back of the neck, put them down the chest, and then you'll see them pull them out and squeeze as much of the water they can out of them. The hotter it gets, the, the longer they'll keep those sponges. And, you know, it's super important when you're going through those aid stations is... is get the hydration in, get the um, electrolytes in, because, you know, you start to deal with digestive issues. And the reason why we have a lot of digestive issues in a triathlon is, you know, 112 miles, we're in our aero bars and our stomachs and our intestine is sitting in a completely different position. And then all of a sudden we stand upright and, you know, that's a really hard for your body to comprehend that, hey, you were like, four, three and a half, four hours on those aero bars. Now you're all of a sudden pounding and like your stomach's like jello. And, you know, some people have no problems with it. Some people have more difficulties. And sometimes it's like you'll do a nine man a hundred times and then there'll be one time where the stomach's like, yeah, not today. Dennis Chavreau is leading the Ironman European men's pro division here today. They are racing for the European championship in one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. This is the financial hub of Europe. This is Frankfurt. And Dennis Chabro over the last one kilometre put a massive surge over Paul Schuster. And now that is a result of the 35 second deficit as we get a good look at Daniela Blamel right now from Darmstadt, which is just down the road from Frankfurt right here. She considers herself the local athlete here. And I tell you what, if she brings home the bacon today, she is going to make a lot of the spectators very, very happy here as Paul Schuster has now slipped into second from Germany. It is Germany number one. She's trying to do what Sandra Vollenhorst did only 11 years ago. And that was the last time a German woman took this championship. That is what she's after today. The leg turnover looks exactly the same as the bike turnover. And that was a thing of beauty today. She was great on the bike. She did a 4.46 and now she's out here to run a PB. Can she go under three hours, McKeeley? Time will tell, Greg. Time will, will, will tell, that's for sure. But, yeah, she looks comfortable. Obviously, she's zipped down the tri-suit because, you know, we know it's hot. Um, making sure she's, you know, getting her nutrition in. Uh, she's, like, stashed it right there at the, the front. But, yeah. What when does you, she have there in the, in the sports top there, McKeeley? It looks like maybe some Morton gels. I would assume it would be some type of Morton gel. Um, Sometimes you carry some salt tablets. Um, sometimes you can't always r rely on, on what you get on course. So it comes down to a personal preference of like, well, I'm going to rely on the race course, but there's a couple of times I want to rely on the stuff that, that I want to use. And that just comes down to like a personal taste or the consistency of if it's a gel or, you know, you also have chews. So it's like, how quickly do they they melt or do you have to chew them a lot? Because, you know, that's energy that you're using. And then also how quickly it absorbs into your stomach. And that's all part of the training process. It's like, 
you know, the biggest advice you can ever give any athlete is like train on what you're going to race on. And that's so important that you look at the course and you see what's on the nutrition that's on the race course. Because as we saw on the Pave today, there was a few athletes that lost their nutrition. So you, that made, might have been your special nutrition that you lost. So it's always important. And it's much easier if you can just train with the race day nutrition, like less things to carry, less things to worry about. And you should always have a backup plan that if you do lose your nutrition, that you have a backup plan and you're used to using whatever's on course. Well, some things never change, and that is the big crowd. The large crowd is forming here on the River Main as the women's leader goes through here. They've just completed the first lap of the run course. That is Daniela Blemel. She is local. She is getting all the favours from the crowd. They're all on their feet. They've all come to the side of the road. They've put down their steins of athletic brewing beer there, and they are just all out in their droves today. Daniela Blemel is now making her way into the second of four laps out here on the run course. There's the special needs uh, options there. What can they get there? You know, all sorts of great stuff. <laughs> you know, you're going to get Gatorade. Um, you're going to get the Morton Gels. You'll get, but typically you get bananas. You'll take get the best tasting oranges that you've ever had in your entire life. Um, you will get some sort of cola. The problem with cola, it's like once you start taking it, you have to keep taking it. Um, Why is that? Well, because there's more sugar and? in... Well, it's a caffeine, so you want to make sure you have... The caffeine's like for mental focus and energy. Um, so it's a nice change too, even though they usually take the fizz out of the cola. It's definitely like, again, just like the oranges, some of the best tasting cola that you'll ever have in your life. I always thought it was nice to have, a, you know, a cup of cola there because it had a little bit of carbonation in it. So we just... Yeah, no, definitely. You know, bubbles are good. Yeah, bubbles are good. You know, stir up the body just a little bit, a little burp here and there. <laughs> it actually sounds disgusting, but it feels really good. Yeah. All right, so Daniela Blamel, she is continuing to lead this race here in Frankfurt. It's been a solid showing of just complete domination right from the outset on the bike ride. She got up to a training partner who... Unfortunately, had to pull out of the race today with a, a mechanical on the rear wheel there and uh, unable to be fixed and, and doing it for herself and doing it for a training partner as she makes her way out on the second lap of the run course. But back to our men's race, so we can tell you that Paul Schuster slipped down to uh, 35 seconds, 112 down is Will Kobiecki now. He was at 37 seconds down, McKeely. He has now slipped back. So he made a huge charge in the first two laps. And now he's sort of paying for it just a little bit. Clement Mignon, he's at 220 down. So he's 108 down on third place. But that's the podium. He can sniff the podium. The young French athlete has a shot. There is Boris Stein. He is slipping back to 309 now. And then at 347 is Peterson from Denmark. We haven't seen Peterson from Denmark because there's been so many lead changes happening out there. And then Hogenhauk is also down at 426, losing a bit of time. And part of the reason why you're seeing what, what we're seeing, what we're seeing is because that big move that Dennis... Chevro did. You know, just picking up that pace, accelerating, it's sort of like lost. Like if you're behind that and all of a sudden you're, you're right there and then all of a sudden they like gaps out, you sort of start to lose that motivation to, to keep putting the pressure on. It's, it's much easier if you can see the person, but as soon as you start seeing them move away, that definitely can have a huge mental impact on, on, on what's going through your head. And, you know, we talk a lot about, again, the chimp brain, because I love the little <laughs> chimp brain, because he's the annoying little guy in, in your head that'll tell you all sorts of things. You don't have to listen to it, but yeah, sometimes in that moment of weakness, you know, you can get to it. And it's, it's that elastic band effect that we always talk about. How's Nikki Bartlett looking to you? She's actually looking quite comfortable. I think she's running slightly quicker than Daniela. Plymouth right now. Not by much. I mean, she's still got some time to make up, but she she looks quite comfortable. She looks like her turnover is a little bit quicker. 
I mean, Daniela still looks great. There's no doubt about it. But I think, like, Nikki right now, I don't know, Greg, do you have some splits? Am I correct in thinking that she is running slightly quicker than Daniela right now? Yeah, you are right. And uh, she has made up quite considerable time. She is running about 10 seconds uh, average per um, kilometre faster. She's made up 10 seconds over the last uh, couple of kilometres, so she makes a steady progression on that. It's just enough to put a little bit of pressure on Daniela, and if Daniela knows that, then, you know, things can happen. But Daniela's, um, you know, just starting her second lap, as is Nikki Bartlett. So we are winding down our men's race, but our women are just getting started here in the main over Ironman Frankfurt European Championship. There's this beautiful moment in time when neither foot is touching the ground. We are free of gravity and weight, moving above the doubts, past limits, when we are light, transformed and hopeful. And if we were to collect all these moments, join them together, well, this is when anything becomes possible. This is when we fly. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. Well, we talk about how important nutrition is in an Ironman triathlon. It's all about staying on pace. It's all about doing what you can do for yourself. It's not about somebody else's pace. It's not about somebody else's new nutritional formula or plan. It's about yours. And that was Nikki Bartlett. She went into the special needs area as she went through onto the second lap as we start. Here is the River Main, and this is Nikki Bartlett in second place. She is trying to catch Daniela Blaymel. Now, the story is unfolding in front of our eyes, McKeeley. 10 seconds a kilometre is what she's pulling back out of the German athlete up front. Is she going to catch? Does she have enough real estate, or is she going to run out? You know, there's still a little under, like, maybe 29 kilometres left to go. So um, 6K would be, if she can keep that up for 6K, that's a minute right there. Um, so we have six... That's five minutes yeah. is exactly right yeah. on. So you'd, you'd be running it. She's at 5.05 down right now. So if you were to do that math going down to the finish line, you would have almost a dead heat there. So let's see what, uh, you know, Nikki Bartlett, she ran in, she purposely ran sideways into the special needs area to get what was available to her from what she put out there. So that's important for her, and she knows that that's going to be important for her later on. And that may not slow her down. That might you know, not slow her it, down. It, As a matter of fact, it might, uh, you know, give her everything that she needs for the energy to stay on pace coming up later. No, exactly. So you're being co conscious of your needs. And if that's like you have to walk through an aid station or you need to make sure that you get everything you need from every aid station. It's called sticking to the plan. <laughs> All right, so he's got uh, a little bit of company right now, Dennis Shavro, but don't worry about that too much. He's not uh, factoring into our podium at this point in time because Paul Schuster is in second place. And then we got Wilko Biecki from Poland in third place at this point in time. Clément Mignon from uh, France is our second Frenchman inside of the top four. And then we have our, you know, our race leader heading out onto the run course today, Boris Stein from Germany, holding down in fifth place. But Peterson and Hogenhaug from Denmark laying in six and seven position, and they are putting the heat now on Boris Stein. And, and this is where it's going to happen. You know, we're almost at the end of lap number two. That's around like 21, 21.5 kilometres. And then the last two laps, that's where we're really going to see, you know, who is the strongest today because it doesn't matter who you are, you get to that 30K mark, it, it's tough. It doesn't matter what level of fitness are, what level of athlete you are, you know, that 30K mark gets super, super tough. But it's also quite motivating because as Paul and Yubi Fraser always used to tell me, you can always get yourself home. 
and if you know if you're in a podium spot and you've got 10k to, to go if, if your your body and mind is willing sometimes your mind is willing and your body's like sorry screw you <laughs> <laughs> you know and and that's part of like endurance sports it's like Sometimes the mind is like, oh, no, rest up a little bit. But then sometimes it's like, come on, let's go. And your muscles are like, yeah, not today. Yeah, when they say, you know, it, this is cliche, but, you know, mind over matter. Well, what the matter is that it's, uh, you know, it's a physiological thing and you're actually running along and, you know, you've trained uh, three, four, five months out of the year for this particular event. And once your body is like it's shutting down, it's not going to be moving if it does not want to move, no matter what you say to it. So, but if you're well trained and, uh, you know, everything is lining up, then it happens. And that's... That's what you've got to do in training is you've got to have those days where you've got to challenge yourself and just say, hey, listen, you know, think about if you get to 30 kilometres in the run, you're just starting to have a little bit of a down, you know, section. You just say, hey, you know, what was the best 10 kilometre T run that I ever did? Exactly. You know, go back and look at the, the, the fun things. What, what was the most fun T run that I ever did? You know, how did oh, I What feel? was the hardest race I've ever done? Oh, I can get yeah. through this one easy. Just call on something. You, you're always trying to constantly fake yourself out. <laughs> But um, anyway, so Paul Schuster looks good again. He looks like he's back up on his toes. I think he had a little bit of a moment there where, um, you know, Dennis Shavro did the, you know, did the overtaking and, and I think it took a little bit out of him. But I think that Paul's actually running nicely again and, and let's hope that he can, you know, just keep that pace going because he's got, he's got company a little bit behind him, you know, in Wilko Wiecki, uh from Poland. So who knows, the, uh, the Polish man, he might be honing in on that second spot on the podium. You know, the Ironman European Championship means a lot. You know, to these European athletes, same as the Oceania Championship, same as the World Championship, it is a thing up for grabs here today. It's called a title, and there's three Ironman qualifying spots that go with three people that have not already qualified. No, exactly. It's always bragging rights to say that, you know, you're European champion. And and, and today, we, we're not sure who that's going to be, but den definitely uh, Dennis Chevro looks good. Great. Paul Schuster is hanging on uh, in second place, about 35 seconds behind. And then we also have Wilka Wecky in third place. It's hovering right there, but behind uh, Paul. So it's a race. There's no doubt about it. This is a race. Yeah, it really and is. Yeah, we got a got, lot of ground left. Yeah, then you've got Mignon, who's only, you know, a minute uh, down on third place. So there is pressure there. Boris Stein's trying to hang in there as best as he can. Then you've got Peterson and Hogenhal from Denmark. They're at 347 and 426. Down then you've got Bronze from the Netherlands and also Koolhaas. Uh, he was right up there, you know, in the early part of the swim today. So he's hanging in there at 9.21. And then rounding out the top 10 right at 10 minutes is Niels Fromhold, the German stalwart. Yep, he's been racing for a long time and he is still in the top 10 right here in Germany. So there it is, as we see, as Chevro is in the lead. Schuster, Wilko Wiecki, there's Mignon and Stein round out the top five. Peterson and Hogenhag, the Danish duo there, are in six and seven. And then it's the Netherlands duo out of Bronze and Kulaus. And then it's Nils Romhold, our third German, that's sitting inside of the top ten right now. No, that's that's a good-looking top ten, that's for sure. It really is. And, uh, you know, as we progress, it's like we're going to start looking for, for weaknesses. But these guys all look very controlled. They look controlled, they look comfortable. I mean, yeah, we saw Paul like grab at his side a few times, but now he's found his rhythm again. And, and that's what you got to do. It's like, how do I get out of those patches in an Iron Man because it's a roller coaster? What do I do to get out of that hole, get myself back on track? And, you know, these are little things, you know, getting the hose, getting the sponges getting the hydration in, all these sort of things have a significant impact on getting through the race the fastest you can. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Chevro looks down at the watch there and uh, 
just uh, running along nicely. Still got that beautiful stride length. Everything looks very much in well-controlled uh, space there for Chevro. And I was just looking at the uniform of the guy that they passed, and it, it just, um, you know, brought my mind back to the early part of the day. Now I'm, you know, cluing in on, on what happened with Lukas Voigt is that we did hear now that he is, you know, training for another event and, and uh, you know, just uh, had thought, well, I'm just going to go out and do the, the swim and one lap of the bike. Day. And it was a training day. So I think that he really held back on the swim not to ruin anybody's uh, uh, anybody else's race. So that's how I see it. But um, I'm not really too sure if I would have done, you know, that in competition myself to go out there and, and do, you know, half of the, the Ironman there. He could have done it somewhere else. But... That's just how I think about it. But uh, here we go with Daniela Blamel. She's leading our women's race That's right now. Good. And uh, sorry, in third place, uh, we're looking at um, that's Grohlman just coming up there. So we've got Nikki Bartlett in second and we've got uh, our leader Blamel in first. But in third place right now, we're looking at, uh, you know, Katarina um, Grohlman here from Germany. So Germany one, Germany three. And that's a great day for our German women as they are all vying for one qualifying slot to the Ironman World Championship in October as we make our welcome to return back to the big island of Hawaii. It's been uh, something that we've missed over the last couple of years. Fortunately enough, we had the 2021 Ironman World Championship in St. George this year on in May, in May 7th, and that was a great day out there. What a fantastic day for Christian Blumenfeld and Dad Yellow Reef to get a back on to the top uh, rung of that podium. Do you think she's got a, a chance of um, equaling Paul and Yubi Fraser? And I, eight I Ironman mean, victories. You know, that's, that's tough because there's so many talented athletes coming through. I mean, definitely Daniela is fantastic. You know, she showed she has good form. She dominated the St. George Ironman World Championship course. You know, Paula has a lot of victories. And She's got there's just so much talent. We talked Ironman about victories, yeah. We talked about, and you know, back when Paula was racing, there was only four Ironman, approximately like four Ironman events each year. Yeah, now four to we, six Ironman races yeah, a year. Yeah, and now right. we have so many. So the fact that, you know, Paula won so many with that amount of races, that says a lot about how how once fast. In a, once in a generation. Yeah, once and I mean, generation generations athlete, change, yeah. and, you know, it's hard to compare from generation because of all sorts of reasons. You know, we can talk about coaching has improved, nutrition has improved, bike equipment has improved. You know, the aid stations are, are better. Look who else has improved. Yeah. Wilco Wieck is improving yeah. from third place into second place here as Paul Schuster is under attack. He just has to take a sneak look over. He might see a, um, oh, I think it was a unicorn. Oh, that's Wilco Wieck. There we go. It was a unicorn, but there was a blow-up uh, balloon there. But anyway, get back to the race. Wilco Wieck from Poland is now coming up. Second place will be up for grabs right in the next five to ten seconds here. It's going to be Poland that overtakes Germany to go into second place to the Ironman European Championship. And just like that, Wilco Wieck has erased that uh, deficit and now putting it into a positive right up onto the shoulder of Schuster. And look at this, McKeely. You know, Schuster's now got to sort of get it together. You know, he, he was leading this race, then he was in second, and now he's been overtaken in third, but he's still on the podium. So he's got to use that motivation to keep driving himself rather than losing motivation that the fact that he was leading the race, he was in second, and now he's in, in third. So he's just got to keep doing what he's doing, making sure that he's staying top on, on, on top of his nutrition. And then you've got Wilco Weke, Weke. He's just got to keep moving forward because even though Chevro is looking fantastic up the front, if anyway Dennis Chevro starts to fail, it's so close still. Well, that was the Morton move of the third lap of the men's race, that's for sure, because now it's Poland that goes into second place on the podium. Does he have enough in the tank to get it done in the last lap? We'll have to wait and see, because we are now honing down on the Roma Platz right here on the main river in Frankfurt as our men's race continues to be exciting. A change in the lead. He may be coming around the corner. Don't go away. This exciting race from Frankfurt will be right back.
Whether it's on the road or in the pool, your activity has high demands. Rooted in sweat and grounded in science, we understand your unique fueling needs. That is why we created formulas just for you, endurance athletes, helping you replace what you're losing and keeping you fueled. And there's nowhere we'd rather be than with you along this journey, because together we are formulated for farther. From the creators of Gatorade, Gatorade Endurance, formulated for you, formulated for farther. All right, we continue on the main river here in Frankfurt for the Ironman European Championship, brought to you by Main Over today as we run through the Santini zone for comfort. That's for sure. We look at third place getter from Germany at the moment, looking down at his Wahoo element and just taking on all the data that's possible. The turnaround, he's been able to see what's ahead of him on the right-hand side when he looked over. He saw Wilko Wiecki, who just passed him just moments before we went to ad break and just just before that, it was Dennis Chavro. So Dennis Chavro from France leads Poland and Germany now in third place in the European Championship in the men's division right now as they are passing the 29 kilometer marker. McKeeley with just uh, one and a bit laps to go here. These guys are now fixed on the finish line. This is where you were talking about. This is the 30K marker. This is where it can all be good or it can go south in a hurry. It definitely is the case. This is where it, it sort of will make or break a, a, a lot of athletes. You know, if, if you can hold together your form, your pace, your nutrition, your attitude, you're going to get yourself across the finish line. But it, it, also, it also could go the other way where it's like nutrition catches up on you and you could get cramping. Uh, your energy levels drop, and then mentally you could sort of like check out. And it's a little more fragile right now because, you know, you've been racing for so long, you know, at some point your body is going to say, hey, what are you doing to me? I mean, you train for that not to happen, but somewhere in an Ironman it will happen. And that's where, you know, the mind has to, to really step up and go, no, you're okay, just keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, you talked about earlier how you're going to visualise what that 10K run was that you did when you were training for this race. You know, sometimes, you know, it's nice to visualise, well, it took me to run three miles. It, it sort of, like, took me like this, and then I just have to do that twice. So you start breaking it down, and when you're thinking about a, a marathon, it's not like, it's like 42 Ks. Okay, that's all I'm gonna think about. It's like, get to the next kilometer, get to the next aid station, get to the next athlete. And it may be an age group athlete that you're passing. You know, you're trying to do everything you can to keep moving forward, to keep that motivation going. And Wilco Wecky right now, he, he's looking very, very strong. But you know, he's down about a minute and a half on, on Chevro. Well, I think that Wilco Wiecki is running a very nice average pace at this moment. So if you look right now, moving into second place with a 348 as Chevro's running a 344, that is very, very close. Too close to call on this point in time. He's only 132 down as he's making his way through the marathon of this grueling Ironman here in Frankfurt. Well, an Ironman or an ultra marathon? You pick your poison, but if I was you, I would take your run to a new ground with the UTMB World Series. Discover incredible adventure and extraordinary experiences at one of the 25 breathtaking destinations across the globe. Challenge your running skills on the trails and paths of some of the world's most unique landscapes as you connect with nature, with the running community, and with your quest for the finish line. And make your first steps toward the World Series Finals at UTMB Mont Blanc. Well, what a beautiful place in France. With upcoming events in Utah, Switzerland, and Australia, you can start your quest right now. Visit utmb.world to get started. We will see you out there. That's another one McKeeley's signing up for. For sure, we know that she'll be at the start line. <laughs> 
All right. Thanks, Greg. Are you, pa are you paying for all these entries? Thank you. Much appreciated. I, no, the no MJ problem. Race Fund. I like yeah, it. Thanks, I'll Greg. I'll pay for your entry fee. I would love to see you do a UTMB. <laughs> for sure. There was one last weekend in, uh, in Europe. And, uh, I know. It, it actually was, looked spectacular. It did, didn't it? Oh, my gosh. The kids race on the, uh, the Friday night was magnificent. Uh, but the 21 kilometres, you know, that they had to uh, endure was actually quite tough. <laughs> so, as you would imagine, the UTMB would be. All right, Dennis uh, Chavreau is making his way around the Mains River right now. And then I tell you what, he is going to be heading for the Roma Platz. And that's where the party will be rocking and rolling all the way to the midnight hour tonight and beyond. Because that's where 3,000 plus athletes will be making their way to the finish line to be called an Ironman for the very first time or the 10th time or the 50th time. We have a great race on our hands. It's just over seven hours and seven minutes on the race clock right now. Do they have enough in the tank to break eight hours today, McKeely? Um, you're going to look at the uh, tracker and tell me, actually, that's probably the easiest oh. way to figure it out to see what they're expected you, you uh, finish that, time. Really? Yeah, that would probably be my best estimate. But, you know, I did want to talk a little bit about Dennis right now. Um, you know, he felt his training focus was not so good for this race. You know, he started racing triathlon in 2011 and had the same coach up until a couple of days ago. So it definitely wasn't the best way to focus for a race, but certainly right now he's focusing on winning this race. And he also talked about who his biggest rival was and, and he believed it was his, his mental um, attitude. And he said, you know, if I am mentally in the course and I can do well, uh, it might be a bad day if I don't keep on top of my mental aptitude. So definitely, you know, that's, you know that, that mental aspect, again, is so important. You know, making sure you are in a positive mindset. And... You know, when you look at the fact that, you know, he's not getting coached by the coach that's coached him for such a long time, as an athlete, you can use that to your advantage as well. You know, you, you can sort of go, you know what, this is the choice I made. This is the race that I'm focusing on. Yeah, maybe wasn't the best timing to change a coach, but when is? And it's like, it's that moment when, you, you know, you're an athlete and you have to have 100% faith in, in, in that coach. And, and sometimes it may be not that, maybe it's the fact that, hey, I think I need a, a change. And I think a good coach will teach you to coach yourself. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing I think any athlete can, can learn. You know, a coach should be there to definitely guide you and make the tough decisions for you. Like, should I train today? I'm a little bit run down, I didn't sleep well. My nutrition wasn't great. I have some family things that I need to take care of. You know, all those things play a factor and a coach can help you decide that. But you know, that coach athlete relationship can be very, very fragile because that coach is pushing you to get the best out of you. And sometimes, yeah. you know, that's a little bit of a struggle. And sometimes if, if you're not believing what the coach is providing you, yeah, that's a, maybe a red flag to change. Yep, so listen to your coach. You've got to listen to yourself because at the end of the day, it's up to you because you know your body better than anybody else. But Dennis Chavreau right now is running his way to victory. Will he have enough to hang on for the Ironman European Championship? He's been chased down from an athlete from Poland named Robert. Will Kowiecki will be right back.
So the action continues on the River Main here as uh, we are now in the final discipline of the Ironman European Championship here. If you're just joining us, this is your leader on screen. It hasn't been a leader all day long, that's for sure. He got it about 10 and a half kilometres ago where he just went into the lead, overtaking race leader at the time. That was Paul Schuster of Germany. Now they are on their final lap of the run with only 10 and a half kilometres to go. It looks like Dennis Chavreau may have enough in the tank to get himself to the finish line there and secure a sub eight hour time today. However, in second place, it's Robert Wil um, Wilko Wiecki from Poland, who's now lost a little bit more time. He was at 132 check down, just uh, the last check. And now he's just gone across the mat at 149 down. So losing 17 seconds to our race leader right here. Former leader of the men's marathon race here right now was Paul Schuster from Germany. He now stands 12 seconds behind Robert Wilke Wiecki. So things might be coming back the other way. Everything is changing around. We have a great race to talk about in the closing 10 and a half kilometers of this incredible European e championship race. It has not disappointed one second at all. We've had so many leaders today, so many lead changes. It's been absolutely fantastic. One athlete going to the front, one athlete getting overtaken, another one to the front, another one getting overtaken. The action is going to continue well into the night. This is Jenis Chavreau from France, and he is making his way toward the European Championship podium spot, number one, somewhere where he's never been before and somewhere where he wants to visit in about 30 minutes from now. Now, Dennis Chevreau looks really, really good. I mean, his, his pace really hasn't faltered. He's been strong. As soon as they got off the bike, you know, he was, he was one of the guys that was, that was moving just a little bit quicker than everyone else. And then we definitely saw him make his move on Paul Schuster, and he was aggressive about it. You know, he came up, he sort of attacked a little bit, and then Paul, like, came back at him a little bit on that technical down as they came back across the other side of the river. And then he really like put the screws in. And then we had Wilco Wecky, who took quite a while to catch up to Paul Schuster. But it was actually quite decisive when he sort of came past. I mean, it took a while for him to, to catch on. But then, you know, Paul Schuster is hanging in there. You know, right now he's just got to keep the pressure on, keep moving. Can, I think the big question now is like, can Wilco Wecky push forward if Dennis Chevro starts to falter? But right now, Dennis looks very, very strong. The turnover looks good. He looks comfortable. But first and second, they, they look great right now. Yeah, they really do. Dennis Chevro is, uh, you know, he's really running away with it at this point because he's running 419s, 429s for Wilco Wiecki, and then 442s for Schuster. So over the last kilometre, both of our athletes lost time to our leader. Now, Wilco Wiecki, he lost lesser amount of time. Paul Schuster is down at 225. 156 um, is now Wilco Wiecki. So Schuster lost about 20 seconds on Wilco Wiecki and Wilco Wiecki lost about 19 seconds on our race leader. So it looks like things now for Dennis Chavreau seems to be the ball is in his court. Will he have enough energy to get himself to the finish line in first place today? Or will the battle for second and third place put enough pressure on him? Because they will see each other one more time when they do their turnaround on the last lap here. So Wilco Wiecki, as he makes his way through the, the aid stations right now, making sure that that all-important nutrition is going down the hatch, making sure that that body stays at the normal temperature, no overheating. He doesn't wear a hat. So, you know, everything's going over the head. And, Greg, I think the fact that Paul Schulster was leading this race, moved to second, now in third, I think he's most fragile. He's definitely most fragile at the moment. I mean, definitely we saw him, like, l lose his pace. It's not like, I mean, these guys are running, obviously, quicker than him. I mean, that's why the takeover happens. But definitely Paul Schuster is the fragile one who may get popped off that podium at the end. You know, if he, he does, you know, we saw him earlier suffer some side issues of some sort. We saw him, like, reach for his side. So if that happens again, you know, one of those guys coming up from behind because 
there's a couple of athletes, right? We've got... Well, here is exactly what you're talking about. At last time check, Mignon, yeah. he was two minutes, sorry, two minutes and two seconds down behind Schuster. Now he has moved inside of that. He's now 155 down. So it looks like Mignon is now making his way, you know, back toward Paul Starting Schuster. Starting to feel good again. Yeah, so he's got to make up, you know, inside of the last 10 kilometres, McKeeley, he has to make up around about 12 seconds a kilometre to get the job done. So that's going to be a tough task, you know, for Mignon, but 12 seconds a kilometre at this point of the race. Now, you talked about the 30 to 35 kilometre race. In a marathon, we call that sort of, if somebody starts to falter there, it's called... Hitting the wall? Hitting the wall, <laughs> right? So when you hit the wall, what happens, Makili? Your, your body runs out of, you know, energy and... and, and, and glycogen. It, it, it is, it's glycogen. So explain what happens. It's exactly what we what we said, you know, you, you hit the wall. It's like one minute you're like, woohoo, and the next minute you're like, bang, slam, right against that, that, that wall. And it's... And that's the point where you may not be able to push through. It doesn't matter how much training you've done. It's like sometimes your body is like, yeah, sorry, race over. Race might be over for our age group athlete here if he decides to hang on to Dennis Chavro for too long, that's for sure, because that's a crack and pace that he's setting at the moment. He's running along at uh, 4.05s at this point of time, and, uh, you know, that, that equates to around about a 2.48, 2.49 marathon, but at this point in time, it's too early to tell, you know, exactly what run time that he'll be doing, but uh, it's going to be, you know, right around where they were last year, I would say the 2.48, 2.49 range. But, um, you know, they, the athletes here are looking like they're going to crack the eight-hour barrier one more time, which is fantastic. It's never easy again, to do. Again, <laughs> this year it's been so awesome to see so many records going down. And, you know, if, if that can happen today, that they can go under eight hours on this course, you know, it just shows you the calibre of athletes and how athletes are getting faster. I mean, ultimately, that's why I'm excited about Kona because you have so many athletes over the last three years that have improved and that's where we've seen, you know, some athletes that we know about and other athletes, we're like, oh, you've got to take notice of them. And I think part of that was the pandemic, that there was a chance for some of these athletes to actually build a lot more than if they had a plan of where they had to race and peak, where you really didn't have that opportunity to race. So some athletes are definitely benefited from that and some athletes haven't. You know, it's sort of like that moment of opportunity that that, that year may have taken something away from an athlete, but that year may have also added to the athlete. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, in the closing uh, moments right here, Wilco Wiecki is uh, trying gallantly, but he is losing time to Dennis Chavro uh, in that uh, race. And that is for first and second place. But Paul Schuster, you know, sitting back in third place, uh, just losing a little bit of time to Mignon as well. So he's just going to have to keep that pace uh, nice and steady. But for this gentleman right here, Dennis Chavro, he's running along just nicely. I don't think that he's got anything to worry about over the closing stages of this marathon race is to keep everything together you know just uh, keep a positive thought process um stay in the moment stay the plan and uh, you know keep on doing what he's doing as he makes his way back over the river main again no and, and you know by the fourth lap you know every single piece of this pavement if you haven't done the course and you know by the time you run on lap number four it's like you probably know where every little up and down is, where to accelerate. And, you know, he's on the far end of the course right now. He's coming across the bridge and then he'll go down that little technical section to get on the other side. But he just looks so comfortable. You know, he got out on the run. You know, didn't panic that he lost a little bit of time as he came out of transition. Just ticked over. Just kept ticking over the legs, kicking, ticking over the legs, ticking over the legs. And that's how he got himself in, in lead. It wasn't like he was running significantly faster, but he was running faster. And, and that's what you got to do when you have, you know, people so close and you had such a huge pack of people come off the bike together. It's like, don't burn any matches. Just stick to your race plan. Keep pushing it. Don't panic. And, you know, he got a, a little aggressive when he when he got to the front of the race because, you know, it was a little bit like a power struggle. Hey, if you want to win this race, I'm going to make you yeah. push yeah. and push and push. 
And it's sort of like, it's a, a way to sort of demoralize your competition because, you know, obviously they've been running faster if they can catch you and then to like up the ante. And that sort of broke the elastic band for quite a few guys who were, who were close at that time because all of a sudden they could see each other and then now they couldn't see each other. And that was like Dennis Chavreau was the one that like made that happen and really started to splinter the race out. Yeah, exactly, and uh, I think right now, you know, he, he just made up another five seconds on, on the rest of the competition here, so especially on second place, uh, Wilko Wiecki from Poland, um, you know, so it's around about two and a half seconds that he's stretching out on second place, so it's it's pretty much a, you know, a, a foregone conclusion, if you ask me, but he's still got to hold it together. You know what it's like. It's never over until it's over, and, you know, <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see, but uh, it's a, it's always, uh, you know, it's always fun to talk about, that's for sure. No, I mean, it's true, though, because it isn't over until it's over. I mean, history will tell you that over and over again. It's like, don't get cocky. Make sure you keep your nutrition going. Uh, and the body can, like, turn around and, and, and kick you down to the ground and go, hey, cramp. And, you know, when that happens, there's not a lot you can do to turn it around because, you know, by the time you get the cramp and to get those cramps under control, it could be, especially in a close race like this, it's like game over. But, you know, this, this was his prediction. You know, be there off for the run and then see what you have left. And, like, he's living the dream right now, that, that this is the race plan that he wanted to execute. And right now he's right on target to be the European champion here in, in Frankfurt. You know, how awesome is that? 20 years of the Ironman Frankfurt, number 20 today, and he's looking like he's going to walk away, well, actually run away with the title of European champion. And, you know, the thing with titles, it's like in the moment you may not be like, oh, I got the title. But definitely when people remind you after the race or down the road, you know, it's pretty special to, to, to win a title like this. It is very special. I mean, this is the European Championship, so that's why they're running so hard for this one. Right now, that's Wilko Wiecki. He is now finding himself just over two minutes down off our leader. But back in, the, you know, 2022, the this year hasn't been great for Chevro. I mean, he had a DNF at the Ironman St. George World Championship. We were mentioning before, this is redemption. Today is redemption for all those things that didn't go right in 2022 already. But in 2021, he ran a 2.35.18 in Ironman Austria. He won the race. He had a great race in Ironman Tulsi. He was fourth place. Back in 2020, it was like, we're going to say that that was a blah year with COVID and everything. 2019, well, he had one uh, podium there in uh, Ironman Sweden in the second place and another podium uh, in third place at Ironman Australia. But look at the times that he's been running consistently. 244, 250, then, you know, you go down to these other races, 249s, you know, 247s. They've been there consistently ever since, you know, on Ironman Florida, he made his debut and he ran a 257, but then, then he was straight into the 249s in 2013. So he's been running consistently, you know, with a 249, 250, you know, back there in 2014. But and now... And on the bike. Yeah. You know, he's, he's but, quite strong on the bike very strong, as well. But, but now at 34 years of age... Seems like he's found the, uh, you know, the fountain of youth. All right, well, this is another fountain of youth because that's Robert, that is Wilco Wiecki as we cut back to our leader here as we now are running toward that 35-kilometre section in our run right here at the mine over Ironman Frankfurt. The European Championship is winding down. Denis Chavreau from France is your leader. uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. 
that thing that's for everyone. The Hyperbolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. Greg, Welcome. we're sorry, we're back. We we're are back. back watching all the action here at Ironman Frankfurt at the uh, European Men's Championship. But Greg, we were just talking a little bit about Ro Ra Robert Wilwecki. So let's have a little talk about what he did in 2022. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, two weeks ago, well, let's go back to uh, April and then we'll get to where he was two weeks ago because in April he had a DNF in Ironman, Texas. That was obviously the place that he was looking at, you know, punching his ticket to Kona. That didn't happen. But two weeks ago he's really run into some form here. He won the Ironman 70 points pre-Warsaw in Poland, so that's his home race. And uh, that was a great result for him in 2021 Ironman Cozumel, fourth place back then with a, a great run of 246. But, um, you know, Ironman Barcelona in 2019, um, that was a good race for him as well. So he loves to run around about that 246 mark. So he's a uh, very solid runner, as we can see, but he's got unfinished business right here in Germany because last year... DNF didn't finish the race. So that's why he's on a tear right now. He's in great form, coming off a brilliant race two weeks ago. So we know that he's in form on the marathon. And does he have anything in the tank to challenge Dennis Chavreau? By all indications, it looks like no, because at the last point, it was a 201 deficit, and it was right before that it was 156. So losing another five seconds over the last time check, McKeeley looks like he's running out of space. Yeah, definitely. You know, Dennis Chevro took control of the race and he just con continues to just like edge away. Like we talked about it earlier that he just keeps edging, edging, not running much faster, but enough to start to say, OK, he's now minutes in front. Uh, we're going to go back to the women's race right now. Uh, this is our women's leader, uh, Danielle Blimeth. What a great day she has had. Like, absolutely fantastic. Second out of the water, got to the front of the bike, took over her her training partner, and then she's, she's, she's just continued to impress. Just steady all day long, running very, very consistent. Um, in second place, we have... Who yeah, do we second have in second place? place? Yeah, just a moment ago. Uh, you I know, know we, you were checking that out. Right yeah, then. Nikki, Nikki Bartlett, she was at 4.40 down, so she is making her way, you know, to warn her. But uh, it sort of settled. She she did make uh, a lot of progression, you know, through the first 15 kilometres. But then by 18 kilometres, it's all settled back down. They're running about the same average pace. And now we're at about 440, uh, sorry, 438 uh, deficit. So she got within, um, well, she got within the 448, uh, sorry, 438, but now it's back out of 440. So they're running around about the same time at this uh, at this point on the race. And there you can see Nikki Bartlett just, uh, you know, loping along the run course here today, but she's chasing uh, Daniela Blamel. And uh, I think Daniela's um, doing just fine. She's got plenty in the tank. No, and Nikki came into this race because it was a bucket list item. And, you know, she was super excited to, to get on. You know, she struggled as well, you know, got long-term COVID, got injured leading into St. George, um, got her 73-point world slot. So we know that's a big goal for her at the end of the year. Um, she also got in a triathlon because her friend persuaded her to do it. And then we talked about that she was... Uh, a paratriathlon guide, uh, just like me, where you guide a sight impaired athlete, you swim with them, ride the tandem, and then you run with them and you have a tether in the swim and a tether in, in, uh, on, the, on the run and the swim. But yeah, it's, it's great to see her out here racing. She's in second right now. You know, wasn't happy with her 13th place at Ironman St. George World Championships. But today, I think she's going to be pretty happy if she can manage to be second on the podium here today. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's a, it'll be a good result for her, but she's chasing, you know, Blaymel. And Blaymel's had a good year this year. You know, she took a little bit of time out, you know, with a child and uh, now comes back into racing again. Didn't finish in Dubai in the earlier part of the year, but uh, just uh, soon after that, one month after that, down in South Africa, she was good enough for the win. She went 8.09, so that we know was a shortened course on the swim. There was only a 10-minute swim there, but she rode close to the five-hour mark on a pretty decent course in a 3.11 run 
uh, on a lovely course around Nelson Mandela Bay there, but it was back in 2019. She was the victor of the 70.3 Zellum C. She was third in Challenge Roth, and she was also, you know, up there in a bunch of other races too. So she did really well in well, 2019. Wasn't that, which Iron Man did she battle with Lucy Charles? Yes, yeah, so I think. Was that 2018? I, I think it was in. I think it was in Roth. So um, yeah. yeah, so it was a good, good little battle that she um, she had there. So anyway, but she's um, back to where she needed to be. She's 33 years of age right now, and uh, you know she's 48 ranked uh, in the world at this point in time. But you know she's racing against this young lady on screen right now, and that is uh, you know Nikki Bartlett, who's had a you know pretty good career of her own. So good luck to her, Nikki. You know she's coming in some uh, pretty good ranking points. She's 37 as well, and she's, uh, you know, um, this year she won Ironman 70.3 Marbella, you know, with a total time of four and a half, and she was 13th place at the Ironman World Championships in uh, St. George on the 7th of May. So she's enjoying a good year. Yeah, and don't forget in 2021, she was uh, top 10 at the 70.3 Worlds. So she definitely will be looking towards the end of the year to try to get a top 10 again at St. George for the 70.3 World Championships. Yeah, she's been pretty solid in her Ironman races because Ironman UK, she was second place as well. And, you know, that that's a pretty tough course down there. 10 hours, you know, in second place. That's tough. 56 minutes swim, 540 on the bike and a 322 marathon run. That's a hard course. And she was second place in Ironman 70.3 Lanzarote. So... She's, she's enjoying some pretty solid racing. Well, some uh, hard <laughs> some hard courses. She's, she's definitely of, a tough cookie to pick all I, those uh, tough courses. And I Well, I think that that's what she thrives on. And that's why she came here, because she knew that this, um, you know, adjusted bike course was going to be a little bit, you know, more challenging. There was pretty consistent wind today as well. And uh, the weather conditions here have been challenging today, um, you know, just to add to it. No, I mean, that's the whole point when, you know, you're looking up to sign up for a race. It's like, what are my strengths and my weaknesses? And, and sometimes, you know, it's a little bit easier to, to, to pick races according to that, but sometimes it's just timing. You know, things didn't go according to plan, so you've got to readjust. And that's where, you know, you learn to adapt very quickly. And, and that's the thing when you're a professional, it's like you, you make a plan, but you've got to be flexible enough that, that things change and, you know, maybe it's like, you know, that was a little more competitive field than I wanted. So maybe I want to do a field that, you know, especially if it's a goal for qualifying for the Kona World Championships, like there's only one women's spot here. So it makes it, even though it's a small women's field, it's super competitive because there's only one spot. Whereas in the men's European Championship title on, on, on the line, it also has three Kona slots. And, you know, this is the time of the year where you sort of like, for me, I feel like this is the best opportunity to get that Kona slot because once you start getting towards Kona, it's like where does that level of fatigue stay in your system after an Ironman? Obviously, the amount of training you do uh, will determine what that recovery period. If you're used to doing loads and loads of training, then it sort of feels like oh, it's just another training day. But if your mileage is a bit less, you know, it's going to take you a little bit more to recover. And then how much fitness do you lose while you, re you recover as well? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's well said. So Blame El Nell uh, leads Nikki Bartlett by 4.38. So it went out another two seconds the other way, and now it's come back. So the ladies are running around about the same. It, it, a 4.53 average pace and a 4.51 for Blamel and Bartlett respectively. Bartlett having a little bit, you know, a little bit more on a side at the moment. So we'll see, uh, you know, what... Uh, transpires over the next uh, couple of kilometres in the women's race, but in the men's race, it is really getting interesting because we're going to see if, uh, you know, Dennis Chavro can actually hang on to this race because right now he does have a gap of two minutes and one second over, um, you know, Wilko Wiecki from uh, Poland, but Paul Schuster is still hanging in there at 2.53 now. 4.40 down is Mignon. So Mignon has just started to slow down. Hogan Haug has eventually gone past Peterson, his countryman there. They are at uh, 6.41 and 8.45 down. So Hogan Haug seems to be making a little bit of a move and he's got a pretty fast average time happening at the moment. So Hogan Haug now is making his way back into the race. But it's all Dennis Chavro at the moment, the uh, the Frenchman looking for his first Ironman European Championship. And it was interesting that you, you were mentioning, you know, how there is still movement in the field because 
right now it's like, okay, we're going to near the end of the race. What do I have left? Uh, for somebody who's in the lead, like Dennis Chevro, it's like he's just going to try to maintain the momentum that, that, that he's got. You know, definitely you get that extra motivation. Uh, the crowd's going to get louder and louder as he gets closer to the finish line. But then, you know, if you're a little bit behind, you know, that, that third to fifth position... And, you know, and, and you've got to think, okay, what do I need to do to use every piece of energy I have to make sure I get the best result on the day? And subconsciously, you, you, you're you not really, like, saying to yourself, oh, I've got to do this. But, like, at some point, you're going to go, okay, this is how much time I have left. These are how many kilometres I have left. Do I put in a big effort because I think I can catch the next person? Or do I think I can hold this and the person behind me isn't going to catch me? And that's where those little, like, strategic mind games, you start playing with yourself. You know, at the front of the race, it's like, hey, I've just got to maintain, especially if nobody's catching up from behind. But when you're in those fragile positions of, you know, anywhere from second to tenth, especially at a European championships, it's like at some point you're going to go, okay, do I have anything left to push? Is anyone going to catch me if I don't try to push? Or am I in that comfortable spot where the people behind me are so far behind that I can sort of just keep cruising at the pace that I'm cruising at? Yeah, that's um, that's a good point. <clears throat> when you look at um, our race leader right now, he took a couple of really deep breaths just a moment ago, but um, I think he's filled up his lungs now. The lungs are ready to go and he's uh, ready to attack the last part of the course here. I've got a couple of little fun facts for you. Perfect, Greg. You ready Fire for away. Exactly. Uh, only one time in the history of the race has there ever been a all-German podium. That was in 2007. And that was Timo Brach. That was Michael Gona and Frank Wittrizal. And also on the women's side, it was Nicole Leder, Andrea Braid, and Nina Eggert. So that was uh, a little bit ago, uh, around about 15 uh, years ago or so. But... Um, Look at that, and um, that is Super Sam. We just got information that Super Sam, yep, our autistic athlete has just finished the bike and off onto the marathon run, and that was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, a, a Frenchie may win uh, the yeah, European we've... Championships. We, we were just discussing, and somebody's going to uh, help us uh, answer this question. I can answer it for you right now. I know, I know, I know I can't, but I was trying to, like, engage <laughs> the audience a little bit. The, the question was, like, is this going to be the first Frenchman to win here in Frankfurt, number one? It will and actually... two, win the uh, European Championship? Well, yes. So never has there been anybody from France or Poland, for that matter, on the uh, podium here. In, uh, in Germany, in Frankfurt, as they celebrate 20 years of racing right here in Frankfurt. But, um, yeah, it will be the first time. And uh, first time for the uh, Ironman European champion to be French as well. So it's going to be a great day for the mighty French here as they are looking very, very good. As to is this athlete in front of Denis Chavro because he is absolutely smoking. Maybe he's on lap number one I and not lap number four. That's like a, into it. That's right. a, a little different. But uh, definitely uh, Chevro looks fantastic. You, you know, he, he, he knows he's moving well. He, he knows that the race plan that he had is getting executed exactly how he wanted. You know, I'm sure the last couple of days he dreamed about this possibility. He mentioned in the race plan that he wanted to set himself up for the run. He wanted to see what would happen in the run. And we're seeing what's happening in the run for him right now. He's our leader. He's definitely dominating this race at this point. And I can't wait till we come back and see him cross the finish line.
Well, it was a beautiful day to start the race here at the Minerva Ironman European Championship. This is what the men are competing for. They want the European Championship crown to be sitting on their mantelpiece at the end of the day. We've had a lot to talk about. We had a different swim leader. We had a different bike leader. We have a different run leader right at this point. We've had lead changes all across the day. It didn't matter if it was from Denmark to Switzerland to, uh, to Germany to France, and it's been all over the place. But right now it's France holding down the top spot in this European Championship. Dennis Chavro is going to close with a very good marathon time here today. He was very, very settled in his race plan. He swam well. He sat where he needed to sit on the bike course. He re he resumed to, uh, you know, well, he actually just uh, he got himself into a position on the bike course where he didn't have to do any of the pace setting whatsoever. He had to just be smart, play his nutritional role smart, and then get out onto the run and execute. We know that he can run those, uh, those mid-240s, McKeeley in the marathon run, and he's doing just that today to get the job done. No, he's got about nine minutes approximately left on the course. Uh, he's going to be so happy to, to win here uh, to, and to run so well. You, you know, this is a tough run. It's, it's hot. It's, you're running on a lot of pavement, so that can beat up the legs. Then you've got a couple of those transitions where you come off the bridge, which is quite steep and twisty, so that can be a bit of a, a quad burner. That's for sure. But, you know, he, he just took control. And sub eight, what do you think, Greg? Yeah. Sub eight? I mean, he looks really good. Yeah, for sure. You if know, he they, can continue they, to be strong like this, sub eight it is. Yeah, for sure. They started at 10 after the hour. So that throws, uh, you know, a lot of people as well. But when you look at the race clock here with 7.43, you know, with uh, just a couple of kilometres to run, you know, now you're going to talk about, uh, well, what's it going to be? Is he going to make it there at um, around about, uh, oh, I don't know. What are you guessing, about 7.50? Yeah, it's going to be close to <laughs> around that 7.50 mark. I mean, when we were calculating, like, how much time he had left to run, and, you know, he's he's got a watch on. He knows. He knows exactly where he is right now. And obviously, they he's, he would have set some sort of pace for himself and had a goal to, to run. So, you know, to put himself in a place where he swam where he needed to do, he biked, he wanted to be in this position for the run. He's winning the race. And then to go sub eight, I don't know. That's ticking a lot of boxes off right there. Yeah, he's going to tick them all off today because he's, he's going to run in between, you know, 750 to 753. Right in there, I do believe, today. But look at Paul Schuster. Paul Schuster he is, does. like, hanging on. This has been a great, great day for Paul. You know, he lost a little bit of time earlier. You know, well, when, once he got passed by Dennis, it, you know, the time went out pretty quickly. But then it was, uh, you know, Wilko Wiecki that came by from Poland and was getting the job done. But Schuster has done an almighty job today to keep Germany on the podium at this, you know, Ironman European Championship, which just so happens to be in Germany. And Greg, let's see if we can get three hours under, three athletes under eight hours. I mean, we have the potential f for that right now um, to have three hours uh, go sub eight. How cool would that be for the European Championships to have that many athletes go under eight hours today yeah i think that um i think the telling story there is is what you know the shoes to have left in the tank i do believe the first two gentlemen will get the job done under eight hours and then uh, we'll just have to wait and see uh see how we can just you know hold it all together there we can see uh, one of our age group female athletes behind our leading female pro athlete that would be getting out there today. We've got one athlete uh, spot in our pro women division for the world championship this year, and we've got three on our men's side. So that will be decided a little bit later today. We've already got a bunch of athletes that have qualified for Kona already. But right now, we can tell you that here she is, Daniela Blamel. She is racing away with this race at the moment. She is at 7.40 into the race here, so she's around about an hour to go as well, just over the hour. So there is Daniela Blamel leading our women's race, but in our men's race, yep, that is uh, going to be Dennis Chavreau from France. He's definitely going to take this race right now, but how many can we get under eight hours today? McKeely, you were saying three perhaps. It will be three 
if that, but um, two for sure, but uh, maybe three. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying three because I'm positive. I'm sending those positive vibes out there that, to Paul Schuster. Hey, come on, giddy up, let's get going. Uh, but Daniela, who we were just seeing on screen as she comes through the aid station, is on course to run a 305 marathon. I think she's going to be pretty happy with that. And then when we go down and, and see what Nikki's up to, 301. She's on pace to run a 301 marathon. If she, so if both these girls can hold up their pacing, it's going to, so it's going to they, they both might be able to nick under that 305 hour marathon mark well, on this course. We haven't seen the last of changes on the podium yeah. on the men's <laughs> side. Because Ooh. right now, Clement uh, Mignon has now pulled within uh, 15 seconds of Paul Schuster. So it's coming down to the very, very end here. We know that Dennis Chavreau is probably going to take out the championship in second place. It's going to go to Will Kobiecki, Robert Will Kobiecki from Poland. And in third place, is it, will it be Clement Mignon or will it be Paul Schuster, the local, the German boy? Can he hang on or will it be too French? On the podium today, look at the downtown sites of Frankfurt is really showing off today. That is the River Main, and we can tell you that things are coming to a close. The Roma Platz is awaiting our leaders right now. There it is. The telling story is there. Dennis Chambreau in first place. Robert Wilkowiecki from Poland in second. Paul Schuster in third, and Clement Mignon in fourth place. And they're all closing in on the Roma Platz right now, and it is going to come down to the wire for our third and fourth spot. How exciting are the French going to be if they can get 1-3 on the podium? It might be declared a public holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Bastille Day, July 14th. Yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, here's the thing. Um, I have, you know, mixed feelings with this one because, you know, they weren't able to do their championship, which is in Nice, you know, the, the, the French uh, Ironman because they chose to do the Ironman european championship at the same time so unfortunately uh, those two races fall on the same day um but you know they have a choice to make and this is where the qualifying spots this is where the european championship is and they've really come here and fought so hard today so very very proud of the french gentleman trying to get the job done there he is dennis chavreau he's trying to do that zipper up he knows he's honing in on the finish line and he's getting awfully close to that no, he's definitely prepping himself to cross that finish line in uh, first place and uh, have those bragging rights as European champion. Oh, look at this right now. Look what are we what are we seeing, Greg, on the screen? We are seeing Clement Mignon. Yeah. And uh, Clement Mignon is uh, running very, very smooth and uh, very, very quickly. We can see why the pass happened. <laughs> look at look at the difference in the pace right now. Yep. There you go. So that's it. Uh, it looks like the podium is going to be set, and it's going to be two Frenchmen and a Polish athletes to the top of the podium today unless Paul Schuster can find some magic in those legs coming down to the last uh, kilometres and it is going to be Clement Mignon. He is running absolutely brilliantly right now. He is coming from way back there. He just dropped down in the middle part of the race there so may have, may have had a little bit of a weak spot, you know, right in there just a few moments ago but now he won't run out, of, well he will run out of real estate to catch up to second place but it's going to be good enough for two French to be standing atop of the podium and in third place today. So Clement Mignon has made the big Morton move and overtaken Paul Schuster, the local German, to go on to the final spot of the podium. But it ain't over yet. Dennis Chavreau is now running his way toward the Roma Platz and the finish line of the 2022, celebrating 20 years of this incredible mine over Ironman Frankfurt and McKeeley. It's been a great day and it's given us everything. And you can see the excitement starting to uh, overcome him. You know, he uh, had a few cheers for the supporters and you sort of saw a little bit of a smile creep on, on his face. And, and uh, why wouldn't you? You know, he's so close, less than a kilometre left, left to run. And I can't wait to see him hit the carpet and, and see the excitement because, you know, the fact that it crept in a little bit back there I mean, that just tells you how emotional Ironman racing is. And to be in the lead, to be the first French athlete to win the Euro champs, to be the first athlete 
from France to, to win here in Frankfurt. It, it's a proud proud day if, if, you're, if you're a Frenchman, that's for sure. And particularly this guy, Denis Chevro, he, he just has looked so comfortable on the run. We talked about, you know, he just was steady. He just slowly increased the, the tempo, just like dug the nails in and the screws in just a little bit, just slightly. And, and that's a good way to build a lead. You know, it doesn't have to, to be a lot, but it can gradually, you know, after 42.2 kilometres, it adds up in time. And, you know, he's definitely made sure that he had enough buffer as he uh, cheers his lead guy as he comes into the finish Greg. Well, it's all come down to this. He had something to make up for at the beginning of the year. He wasn't that great at the Ironman World Championship in St. George, Utah on May 7th. But they say that everything comes if you wait. So being patient has been the name of the game. Dennis Chabro from France has really decimated the field on the marathon run today. A strong swim, a great bike ride, tactically perfect. But on the run, he was patient. He got to the front of the race. He accelerated away from Paul Schuster. And that was the Morton move of the day to take home the 2022 Ironman European Championship for our men here today. The Minova Ironman Frankfurt Champion and European Champion of 2022 goes to the Frenchman. Dennis Chabreau is your winner. I think that said 7.52.54 is the uh, unofficial time, Greg. Yeah, so now we're looking at uh, getting our next athlete under eight hours. Uh, who knows if we'll get three in there under that time, but uh, well done to Dennis today. What a great race that he had and just looping around there. Lots of support from the Frenchman. Again, just saying that uh, missing out on Ironman Nice, but bittersweet right here, winning the Ironman European Championship to a packed house at the Ramaplatz. And this will be absolutely rocking and rolling coming up in a few hours from now. But he will be celebrating all night long. The Frenchman takes the European Championship in a great time of 7.52. So great time today from, from our athletes. No record, but a great time. And I think uh, we just saw too, the, the run time was around 2.32. Is that what I saw or 2.35? I couldn't, that yeah, was- 2.34.41 seems to awesome be the new is, norm. <laughs> yeah, like we were talking about that. What do you, what do you need to do to, to win an Ironman? You better be running under 2.35 right now. Yeah, well, uh, that seems to be uh, what's happening in the world of uh, Ironman triathlon right now. So just getting over here to the finish line as well. We got uh, Wilco Wiecki just getting in, and that's uh, going to be a fantastic result from our Polish athlete here. We haven't seen the Polish athletes that much on the podiums recently, but now we can tell you that Robert uh, Wilko Wiecki has arrived and he is the next one of our athletes that we'll be looking um, you know, forward to seeing our Northern European athletes. And Greg, what a great finish uh, line. It was fantastic to see all the spectators, the balloons at the end. I mean, I was getting goosebumps as uh, he was running down the finish line to take out that European Championship. Uh, right now on the screen, uh, we have our third place athlete right here, Clement Mignon, doing a fantastic job. Yeah, I was uh, calling off a, a recent split, so I was wrong in saying that um, the uh, 234 split, we'll get back to that. But uh, right now we can, I can only tell you that was through 41.2. So we're just waiting for our browser to update here to uh, get you the official results right now. So unofficial win goes to uh, Dennis Chavro of France and the European champion for 2022. And Greg, under eight hours, it's probably going to be 7.56 if he hustles a little bit through the trip. But how can you hustle? Look at the crowd. Just amazing su support. I mean, this is why the age groupers also want to come and do it. Like, what a finish line and what a fantastic run for this athlete today. Good enough for second place. He was uh, patient as well. He bowed his time on the bike ride, got his job done on the run today. Coming from way back in the field there and now into a podium position here. Good enough, he has time to stop and say thank you very much to all of his uh, spectators there and from the loved ones on the side of the course. And this is gonna be good enough for second place in the European Championship from Poland. Let's welcome home Robert Wilko Wiecki.
what a celebration. Second across the line, European champion, silver medalist, happy, happy guy right now. And, and what a, a, a great performance for Paholan for him to go also sub eight. Let's see if we can get three under uh, eight. But you know, that finish line, you know, the atmosphere, it's like people, the athletes are hanging there, you know, taking in all the crowd support. It's like, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna be worried about that sub eight right now because that crowd support is absolutely amazing. And, it, and it's such a long finishing shoot and you have so many spectators cheering for you on and getting high fives. I mean, that's a memory that's gonna last such a lifetime. And that's what's the best thing about Ironman. You know, that finish line, the emotion of it. And when we saw it so far from the first uh, two athletes that crossed the line, that emotion of getting across the finish line and, and, and being crowned the European champion, the European silver medalist as, look, Greg, here's our bronze medalist right now. Yeah, well, it's going to go to France and our uh, third place get it uh, today is going to be uh, Clement Mignon. And uh, for France, it's going to be two on the podium today in first and third positions, whereas unofficially we have our winner across the line. That is Denis Chambro from France. In second place, Robert uh, Wilco Wiecki is, uh, he's set to claim the second spot on the podium. This is unofficial results right now. And then in third place, we can tell you that Clement Mignon just takes one long look over his shoulder. He just wants to get the job done. No high fives right now. I need to get myself across that finish line. And that's how it gets. You know, sometimes you're all about the, the celebration and other times you just want to get to that finish line. And by the look well, of it, yeah. he's in a little bit of pain and he just wants to get across the line before the celebration happens. So in third place today in the Ironman European Championship goes to France in the way of Clemente Mignon from France in third place in the European Championship at the mine over Ironman Frankfurt. And Greg, 7.59. Yeah, there we go. We predicted that three athletes, and this is why he was hustling, because Paul Schuster was right there. You know, the pass happened so close to the finish, and, you know, Paul Schuster was in the lead, then he was in second, and then he was hanging on for third but just not quite good enough to get on the podium today. But look, four athletes, four athletes under eight today. <laughs> what a fantastic day. You can't complain about that. When you do a race and you have four athletes go sub eight, that just tells you these athletes raced hard today. Yeah, Hogan Hog might, uh, might be the next one uh, through, but probably about an 8.03 for uh, Christian Hogan Hog. From, uh, from Denmark. So as we see our athletes just getting across the finish line right now at the Ironman European Championship, why don't we just go back and say congratulations to Denis Chavreau from France in first place, cracking that eight hour barrier. In second place again was Robert uh, Wilko Wiecki and in third place from France. So France taking first and third on the podium at the European Championship with Clemente Mignon with Paul Schuster, he never gave up. He never gave an inch. He was rock solid the whole way and just slowed a little bit in that third lap. And then the fourth lap just got his legs and just said, I am taking you, <laughs> putting you into the hurt locker. But what a great race by Paul. He should be very proud. Well, I think the fact that, yeah, he got fourth, that's gonna be a disappointment for him because, you know, he, he, he was up there and, you know, just kept getting pulled away, pulled away. But the fact that he went sub eight, I think that's going to be the silver lining for him today, you know, going sub eight. But definitely he's going to have some nightmares about those last few kilometres because he was so, so close to getting on the podium today. Really was as we got our cheerleaders out there. We got our spectators going absolutely nuts down there at the moment as well. And we got a Danish athlete running toward the line. That is Christian Hogenhag. He's just about to hit the red carpet as well. But there's Paul Schuster, and he's like, wow, that was a day out. And I ran very hard. I fought for the win, and I almost got there. But Dennis Chavro, he owns the European title for 2022. He'll take it back to France, and he'll be very happy about that. He'll be happy for a couple of things with his eight-hour Barrier smashing as well. So Denis Chavreau, the new European champion for 2022, has done it for the very first time for France, right here in Frankfurt, Germany.
Greg, he's just soaking up the atmosphere right now. And, and why wouldn't you, you know, to be the champion today, as you said, crowned the European champion, the first time for his country to be on top of the podium um, at the European Championships, the first time he, his country uh, to win Ironman Frankfurt. Like, what a day. And, and that's probably the best day to describe his run. Like, what a run, what a day. Just put, him, put himself where he needed to be in, in the swim. He was in that big pack of 22 on the bike. And then, you know, when the attack happened and the race really started to fire up, he was right there. And then on the run, just was steady and just slowly ran better than everyone else. And to be able to run under 235 today, what a fantastic run. Like last year, we thought the winner had a fantastic run. But to go this quick in these conditions, wow. Yeah, I think we'll, uh, we're looking at unofficial results there, Makili. I think things are going to change in that department because I had him at 234 going through 41 and a bit kilometres. So uh, we're just waiting for our tracker to update and uh, just waiting for official results to yes, come in. So for sure. We'll wait, we'll wait and see on that. Uh, but let's just take a look on how he got it done over the last little bit here, just coming along the mines turning right up into the Roma Platz and uh, always a great sight when you've got time to high five the crowd you know you've done a great job but when it's for an Ironman European Championship you know you've had one of the best races of your life of your career and that was good enough for our champ today Dennis Chabro takes the top spot and the European Championship to go along with it it's definitely going to be celebrating tonight that's for sure <laughs> You know, I don't know if it's going to be champagne or if it's going to be uh, German beer. So <laughs> we'll uh, we'll have to wait and see. And Maybe the... <laughs> it's uh, athletic brewing beer. There you go. Yeah. It definitely will be athletic there brewing you go. beer. And uh, we'll know that that's coming up on the podium momentarily here as we wait for the official uh, and updated results to come on through. But second place goes out to Robert Wilko Wiecki from Poland today. And it was a great day to see our Polish athletes right up there. Never been on the podium of an Ironman European Championship before and not even here in Germany. So it's been a great day for Poland as we now see Christian Hogenhaug, you know, just coming in to the finish line here just over eight hours. It was a tough day for the gentleman who finished second place in 2021. So Christian Hogenhaug now just getting a little bit of relief off the, <laughs> the nice cold sponges there. That's awesome. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's got to feel good right now. You know, getting that core temperature down, always so important. Doesn't matter if it's during the race, before the race or after the race. You know, it, it feels so, so good. You know, it's probably one of the, the best uh, cold showers you, you're going to have to to complete an Ironman and cross the finish line and, and know that you put every single ounce of energy into it. What, how amazing is that? And, and that's what's so cool about Ironman. You know, the finish is important. doesn't matter if you're first across or you're the last one t today. And especially this finish line, it's, it's so much fun. There's so much support. And it's long. So you get to celebrate for a long time. Just being notified now of uh, drug testing procedures and the protocols involved there. So he has to take a uh, unopened bottle of water from the, uh, the cooler from the uh, representative there, and uh, we know that they'll be uh, rushing off to uh, the uh, drug testing momentarily, but uh, just getting in across the line. Look at Hogan Hagi just like reaches across and just says, mate, well done, it was a tough day for all of us, and uh, still waiting for official results to come on in, but uh, Hogan Hag, Peterson in there from, um, from Denmark as well. And uh, what a great day. We saw a lot of new faces out there, which is also great to see. And uh, just like a little bit of a war zone down there at the finish line right now, the athletes just getting over there, getting their medals uh, over their neck there and a, a nice uh, solid cold sponge on the head. He's just reaching in there. Just give me the coldest sponges that you can find. Just washing the sunglasses. Maybe not a good thing to do there. But anyway, nice little can of Red Bull. That'll uh, accelerate the, uh, the recovery process right there absolutely as we now are waiting and standing by for the interviews with our 
leaders and winners today of the Ironman European Championship. But just to take a look at this one more time as they come on into the finish line. Yep, take one long look around and just know that you're going to get across that finish line without having to sprint there today. But Dennis Chavro was really, really solid. As was Clement Mignon. Clement Mignon in third place, just yes. uh, going through our little wrap here as we see uh, all the athletes just coming into that finish line. But uh, Clement, you can see just laying there at the finish line. He's still down there at this moment of time. But Paul Schuster as well, what a great run for him. He was just rock solid. And just in the last two laps, just slowed down just a little bit and unfortunately missed the podium by that much. Yeah, we, sl so we say slowed down, but he still went under eight hours. So a, a great performance, but Greg, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, he's going to probably be the most disappointed guy tonight for sure, because, you know, he was in the lead, he was in second, he was in third, and then he just got piped at the end to finish off the podium in fourth place today. Official results just in there. 238.45 marathon run for Dennis Chavro, a 241.59 for Wilco Wiecki, and a 244 for Mignon, and another solid run time from Kulas from the Netherlands with a 242.36. So let's just round it up for you as we look down on this beautiful city here on a glorious day. Dennis Chavro is your Ironman European champion. There is Wilco Wiecki from Poland in second place, and Mignon. He rounds out the Ironman European Championship podium. So it's first for France, second for Poland, and a third place for France. There's Paul Schuster, the first of the Germans home right now with a time of 7.59.12. So four athletes cracking the eight-hour magical barrier with seven athletes across the line in our men's professional race today. And those three qualifying slots to the Ironman World Championship are up for grabs. No, Race they... leader off the bike today. This is Boris Stein just making his way across the line. A little bit disappointed, but you know that he would have learned something today. But uh, let's give him some kudos. Eight minutes and 32 seconds down he, after he, the swim. He, 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 he made the race. He was the one that he caught up and then he attacked it. And, and that's what really shaped the race. It was his move on the bike that shaped the race for our leaders because it got rid of a lot of the athletes. You know, he put the pace on, the athletes tried to stay, the other athletes tried to stay with him. They couldn't. He came into transition with almost a four minute lead. So it was definitely everyone else's race to, to win at that point, because if they weren't in that move and, and they weren't there, that's where the, the place getters came from. That very part where if you didn't go with our bike leader, you weren't going to get on the podium today. So what we call the original 22 out of the swim in, uh, you know, in the chasing group that caught up to our early leaders, except for Lukas Voigt and then also, you know, race leader at the time, uh, Andrew uh, Turner was there. They were leading for the longest time, you know, up until the second lap of the bike course there today. And then it was the 22 that took control of the race, but it, there was then the second lap. There was an acceleration. It was done quite considerably uh, from the front of the field there. Boris Stein took it by the horns and he just said, come with me if you can, but then it was on the run. It all unfolded in our very, in front of our own eyes here today for the Ironman European Championship here in Frankfurt on what promises to be a beautiful night all the way up until that midnight hour when we get all of our 3,000 athletes getting across that line. And just like that, they'll be running the same red carpet as our winners just a moment ago in the Ironman European Championship for our men. But our women are still out there. Daniela Blamel, she's running along just nicely right now. We know that she's got a healthy lead. Nikki Bartlett in second place. And then Catherine Grobman, she is in third place. And a good uh, good time for them. And also Dimity Lee Duke from Australia is sitting in fourth place. Yeah, the, the, the women's race very different to the men's race today. Much smaller field, only one Kona slot. Um, Daniela was by far our favorite. There's no doubt about it. You know, she, she definitely came in to uh, tell everyone, hey, this is my race, this is my stomping grounds. And, and that's what she's doing right now. She continues to impress second out of the water, got to the front of the bike and has really 
held it ever since there. So, you know, she spent a long time in the lead. And then we sort of saw Nikki Bartlett sort of like match her a little bit on the bike. They sort of stayed about the same. But then Danielle and Blimuth just proved that she was the stronger athlete on the on the bike. And then on the run, it was pretty much the same. You know, that gap sort of stayed about the same. There was a couple of seconds lost here, a couple of seconds gained there. So both of them have been pretty consistent all day. And that's why, you know, we have Daniela, of course, in the lead, but also why Nikki is in second because she's been rock solid as well. That's right. Just a moment ago, we got a good look at Christian Hogenhauer just getting across the line as we uh, took a trip down memory lane. And uh, now we go back to live shots. And this is Daniela Blemel from Germany, and she's still leading our race right here. You can see that uh, just trying to get everything over the head right now inside of the mouth and uh, just whatever she can to hydrate across this wonderful course here today. Daniela is closing in on the finish line as well. She's had a competition earlier on in the day if you're just joining us. Unfortunately her you know, team member and also her training partner uh, unfortunately you know, ran into a little bit of a te technical difficulty in the bike course today, and that was, uh, you know, Karen at Lay Raider, and as she uh, led the swim out today, just uh, under that minute, but uh, just over the minute, I'm sorry, and then got out onto the bike course, lost a little bit of time early, but it was Blaymel that caught up, and then it was, uh, you know, Blaymel that just sort of rode away as, you know, coming up on that halfway mark on the bike course today where Lay Raider had that incident on the bike. She had to call it quits, but then it was then the UK athlete, Nikki Bartlett, that started the push in second place to get back toward Daniela Blaymel. But it's in the run, it's been very, very evening, and Blaymel is just steadily getting the job done as they make their way toward that finish line. Definitely getting the, the job done today, Greg. And, you know, this is what's exciting, I, I think, about the, the entire women's professionals right now. You know, we have so many women that are so strong. They're so balanced, too. I mean, definitely we have standouts. Someone like Lucy Charles definitely is by far the best swimmer. But then you have a, a, a group of women that are very good swimmers. And then they're very strong on the bike. And then we're seeing, like on the run, if you don't run under three hours, you're never gonna be in contention. And then you get a co these courses where it's not necessarily the fastest course that you could possibly do, but they're going fast. And I think that's just the, the, the showing you that the advancement in the quality of the women's fields is just getting hotter and hotter. You, you know what, I'll, I'll make this comment that on paper you can, you know, you can write down, okay, you list down the swim times, look, list down the bike times and then the run times, I say on their perfect day, all right, this is a scenario that, that can probably happen, but but let's, let's just, you know, wind the clock a little bit forward here and, um, you know, as our women, you know, start, you know, thinking about Kona and uh, some of these women here are trying to get that one spot that's left to get to the World Championship. They're going to be thinking about being in contention there as well. But if you if you want to be in contention, this year is going to be a completely different race. Let's just say, for instance, if Lucy Charles does not get to the start line, right? Um, you've got someone like Lauren Brandon who can swim well, but if she doesn't have Lucy Charles there, then, you know, that, that's a different element of the race as well. Then you've got a bunch of bikers. You've got Daniela Reef, you've got Kat Matthews, you've, you've got Laura Phillip, you've got, you know, a whole bunch of other athletes out there that are going to do something special in the bike. But then if you're someone like Annie Haug, how much time does she have to look at, like, in deficit to get off the bike and then run, you know, just like a Marinda Carfre, you know, come from behind victory and, you know, do what she's got to do. So... The scenarios are now just starting to flow through my head and just <laughs> as we get excited to start thinking about, you know, Kona coming up in uh, just uh, over 15 weeks. No, and that's, you know, what we talked about early, how exciting the women's race is, is going to be in, in Kona. And, you know, you, you saw Laura Phillip totally crush the European Women's Championships three weeks ago. Like, what an amazing performance. And then, you know, you see Kat Matthews have an outstanding race in, in St. George. And, you know, she told us when we talked to her that it was one of the toughest races she's ever done. I mean, obviously she hasn't done Kona yet, 
but you know the St George course is is no joke, and the the quality of the athletes it's just getting better and better. And you know competition is great; it's going to bring out the best in everyone. It really will, and uh, we can't wait to get back there. You know, when we talked about uh, Kat Matthews, she said that she's going to go to a hot and humid training destination, and we know that that's going to be down in the south in the United States. So that is going to be her training ground as she makes her way toward the Ironman World Championships for the very first time for Kat. So Blaymel now running along the River Mains, and she's got about 11 uh, kilometres to run here as we know that she's coming up to that 30 three kilometer marker here and uh, that's going to be good for her as she makes her way through the um, through the uh, run course at this point of time greg we're going to take a little break and watch the men's podium right now There they are, our men's European champions. Our podium just finished and what a celebration and, and what a day. Definitely uh, Dennis Chevro was the big winner today. But look at that. Not only did France take first, but Clement Mignon was third. And then of course we had in second place Wilko Wecki, Robert Wilko Wecki from Poland taking the silver today. Just outstanding performances. <laughs> what a difference uh, 10 or 15 minutes makes uh, when you can hardly hop off a podium, yet you just ran a 2.38 uh, marathon. So there you go as we now look at Daniela Blamel making her way toward the uh, finish line. She's got about 10 kilometres to run, so uh, around about just... Uh, 40 minutes time, we're gonna see our women's uh, winner here in Ironman Frankfurt. They're getting after that title. Uh, the Ironman European women's title was uh, done three weeks ago on June 5th, back in Ironman Hamburg, just a few hours to the north of here. So congratulations goes out to Laura Phillip one more time, but Daniela Blamel, who didn't race up there, she's racing right here in Frankfurt and getting after the victory. Yes, getting after it, she is, Greg. I, that's, a, that's a nice way to put it, because she is. She's getting after it, and that's what she, she's she been doing. And I mean, d definitely slowed down slightly, but very, very slightly. Do I see a little hitch in the gate? Maybe the turnover isn't as quick as we, we saw at the beginning, but you know, it's a marathon. I'm expecting to see some level of fatigue and you know, she's pushing herself. It's a, it's about her against the clock right now. European champion from France, Dennis Giro. Congratulations. Tell me what is going through your head right now? What's the first thought coming to mind? Thank you. Uh, right now, never again, but uh, it's, always like, it's always like that and uh, I'm really happy I didn't expect that. Uh, 12 days ago, I, I said to my uh, old-time coach, I won't go to Frankfurt, I'm dead. I stopped training with him. We were together since 12 years. And I was not sure to come here. I rest during two days without very, very small training. And uh, I restart to, to train very easy. And um, the strong mind came back and I said, OK, I will have a shot in Frankfurt. I booked my flight last Tuesday, so I'm very far from here. And uh, yes, I won and uh, I can't believe it. That's exceptional. Do you think that maybe the fact that you didn't really plan on coming here gave you that little bit of relaxation that made the difference today? I don't know. Yes, maybe. Maybe yes. And uh, But I was not confident because when you stop working with someone you were with a long time, you don't know how you don't know how to do. You don't have the phone call the day before uh, and uh, what you do every time you don't have it. And uh, it was strange. And 
But the competition didn't make it easy for you. They came as close as 12 seconds. How confident did you feel on the run that you might be able to pull this off? I had one minute penalty on the run because of my friend for coaching. So I was not, uh, I, I was still confident because I had a one minute stop. So, and I was in, in good shape. So I, I was confident. This is your third Ironman win. Is it the biggest success so far in your career? Yes, it is. There, there is no doubt about that. So congratulations, and I think what we take away from this is next time you're in doubt if you should go to a race, you should go to a race. Yes, I will. Congratulations. Well, sometimes uh, it's bliss when uh, you know you don't really have uh, much much of a way of a, a plan or a, a goal. I think the goal was there, but I think that, uh, you know, at this the point in time, we we'll go back and we'll, we'll get that The in, one thing we need to later. talk about here is you are, I believe, the first Polish pro athlete in history of Ironman on the podium. Did you know that going into the race? Uh, I knew that I won in Warsaw two weeks ago, and that was the first Polish win, so yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought I'm coming to Frankfurt. Now I feel more like in the French Riviera or something. <laughs> like, yeah, no, the, the days of French kisses right now, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, that's for sure a um, very nice feeling for me. I'm really happy about that. And uh, yeah, I feel very, very tired. Everyone is never, it's never easy, but yeah, I, the atmosphere here is great. And yeah, I'm really happy. It was a really fast race overall, but especially at the beginning with Lukas Voigt pushing it in the swim and then out onto um, the bike as well. Like, were you able to stick to your race plan or did the boys kind of like destroy your race plan out there? Yeah, you're right. Um, I wasn't planning to go with Lukas on the swim and I, actually I did. And uh, probably that was a tactical mistake. Because uh, I was thinking like, oh, we are like in five. Uh, Ukaj is like um, retiring after 90k of the bike, so we will like probably stick with four uh, four people in the group. But uh, the pace on the bike from the beginning was so very fast, and the swim, yeah, obviously it was super fast, and I really felt it on the bike. I mean, I was so I was thinking I'm going backwards, but then I kind of. Uh, found my rhythm again and on the run actually on the first lap it was a big struggle uh, my foot was aching so badly and then I figured out that when I'm going faster it doesn't it, it doesn't hurt that much I don't know why I, I, I knew that it would probably be a struggle in the end but maybe I will somehow do a marathon and yeah it was tough at the end but really happy with the result. That is definitely one of the best reasons I've ever heard for going fast. How are you going to celebrate tonight? Yeah, probably not that much today. Uh, but in two weeks I have my birthday, so yeah, maybe I will recover <laughs> until it. Robert, congratulations. Enjoy that race here today. Stop, stop, stop. Just enjoying the overhead shots of Frankfurt right now. Absolutely brilliant at the Hyper Ice Recovery Zone right now. As we can see our athletes, yep, got the Hyper Vault down there, giving those legs a little bit of a nudge or two. Let's stand by now for Clement Mignon. You look tired, but are you happy? Thank you, yes, I'm very tired. Uh, I'm very glad to my race. It's my first Ironman here at Frankfurt. And I'm very happy to my third place. Uh, at the middle of uh, the run, uh, I'm very tired and I'm saying it's not possible to finish for me. And after a few kilometers, it's good. And the last kilometers, uh, I catch the third and very happy. How much effort was it? How painful was it to run from fourth into third when you passed Paul? Yes, yes, it's very difficult for me because uh, um, uh, at the 30 kilometers uh, I, uh, I have, I have uh, three minutes to the third and in five kilometers, one minute and in my head I say me it's possible to catch him. Did you dream of making the podium here today before the race? Did you have the feeling you can do it? 
Yes, yes. Uh, my goal is to qualify to Kona, and it's okay. And I'm the youngest uh, at the Kona this year, uh, so it's uh, very happy. So I would say mission accomplished. Congratulations to you as well. That was the first word from our top three athletes, and with that, back to the finish line. All right, that was uh, a fun interview with Clement because uh, that's what the Ironman gives you on a day, uh, on debut, you just don't know. You go in blind, you hope for the best, you train for the worst, but you hope for the best. And uh, that's exactly what happened today. So it's France one, Denis Chavreau takes the Ironman European Championship in second place from Poland. That's Robert Wilko Wiecki. And then in third place, it's Clement Mignon. And just saying that, yep, the race gives you everything. You can go up, you can go down. One minute you feel good, the next minute you don't. McKeeley, that's what it does. And we said that, you know, he, he even said it that around about that, you know, halfway mark or just <laughs> over approaching the, the 30 kilometer mark. And as we were talking about, that's the tough time. He said he went through a patch, but he came good. And then he went through a patch, but it was good enough. It was definitely a, a rookie, <laughs> a rookie saying that, you know, he, he didn't think his legs could do it. And then all of a sudden you think, oh my goodness, my legs can do it. And and that's where, you know, you get a good uh, understanding of the experience of what an Ironman is about. F fatigue is real. Fatigue is real and uh, athletic brewing is real as well. And that uh, some of it down the stomach and some over the head in the celebration there, our podium athletes, well, that has become official now. So Dennis Chavro wins the Ironman European title. And in second place, Robert Wilko Wiecki in second from Poland. And in third, Clement Mignon from France, taking out the second of the three podium positions today. This is Nikki Bartlett. She's out there running along in her last lap of the run course here today at the far end of the course here at the moment, as you can see, in second place. Now, the gap is coming down, but ever so slowly. So you know that Daniela Blamel, she's out in the lead of this race. It has been since 2011. We haven't had a German winner. Will it happen today by the look of it? Yes, but Nikki Bartlett, if she has anything to say about it, maybe no, but it's going to come down to the other side of this break. Don't go away. You're watching the main over. Ironman European Championship right here from Frankfurt. There's this beautiful moment in time when neither foot is touching the ground. We are free of gravity and weight, moving above the doubts, past limits. When we are light, transformed and hopeful. And if we were to collect all these moments, join them together, well, this is when anything becomes possible. This is when we fly. Throughout my career, people have doubted my ability and I've had it even more so when I've come into triathlon. I think this year will be very different. There will be bigger expectations on me. I love the way that I race. With my swim background, I'm almost in the driving seat from the gun. I'm the person that everyone is chasing. I want to be the best and I'm willing to work as hard as possible to get there. All right, welcome back to the main over. I am Ann Frankfurt here. This is the European Championship for men. That has been decided. Yep, what a great day from France, but now we're with Germany. This is Daniela Blamel, and look at all the age group athletes just trying to get on the pace of our women's leader right now, McKeeley. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? That's, that's always the case, right? It's like, hey, that's the women's leader. I'm going to get in front. I'm going to beat her. But... Uh, it's also good for Daniela too. It's giving her a little bit of company as she grabs the pole and pulls herself around that U-turn because she's going to use their energy. You know, th this is, it doesn't matter if you're in the front of the race, this is tough right now. You know, she's, she's so close yet so far away. And this is what's fun about a looped course, no matter if you're an age group athlete or you're a, a pro. You know, you can use it to your advantage, like, let's pass the person in front of us and you just keep playing those mind games and then the kilometres will tick over and tick over and tick over a lot quicker. And then, you know, if you're an age grouper, you're like, did you see me? I was running with the women's champion. Or I, I was running way faster than the women's champion. But, you know, it's just part of triathlon, right? 
It doesn't matter who you are. We're all on the same course. We're all trying to get to the, the finish line. And like, we're competitive. It doesn't matter if we're a male or a female. It's like when I'm out there, I'm like, it doesn't matter who it is. If there's somebody in front of me, I'm going to try to catch you. It's one family. It's the Iron Man family. It doesn't matter, you know, what gender you are. So, you know, just get in here and everybody has the same goal in mind and that's getting to the finish line. But, you know, I just love the, the camaraderie, you know, with the athletes here. You can see that... We've got about four or five guys that were, you know, all around our women's leader just a moment ago, but only a, just a select few can sort of hang on to this pace. As you can see, our guy in the black and white right out in front there and the guy right behind her in the all black. So, uh, you know, once again, you know, our women's, you know, the leaders, they're rock solid. They know exactly how to get the job done. And you can see that Daniela Blamel has been just rock solid. You can see a little bit of a grimace on the face. I do believe that she's hurting, but uh, so is everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> really? In an Iron Man, you hurt? <laughs> but this is, this is what it's about. You know, we talked about the Iron Man family. And th this is why, you know, I love race when I raced Ironman this is why I loved it because you meet people out on the course and people will come up to uh Daniela after the race I was running you with you blah 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 and and it's you know and, that, and that's what makes it so special that you know we're, as I said we're all in the same run course we're in the same swim course we're 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 on the same bike course and you know this is part of a looped course yeah, there's a little more tra traffic. You've got to navigate it a little bit. But as I said, you can use it to your advantage. What's great right now, we do have that split screen uh, with Nikki Barlett in second. I mean, this contest, even though it's like four minutes separates them, it's sort of been like that all day long. Definitely Daniela ha has the advantage. She's in, in the lead and, you know, she was faster on the bike. But, you know, it's sort of been a competition for these to female athletes. One minute, Nikki's getting th two, two seconds, in, you know, faster. And the next minute it rotates back to, to, to Daniela. No, I'm taking those two seconds back. And, you know, it might be seconds, but there's still somebody on course telling them what's happened. And you, you're going to keep the pressure up because four minutes can be fragile if things go wrong very, very quickly. You know, but these two athletes look efficient they look steady, you know, even, you know, Nikki's got people to run with, Daniela's got people to run with. It's, it, it sort of keeps you company. It doesn't get lonely because sometimes on these Ironman courses, when you're at the front of the race, you might not see anyone. But these loop courses definitely are motivating because, you know, you can always go, okay, and catch the next person. The crowd support is absolutely amazing on, on the course. And... You know, by the end of it, it's like you can sort of break the race down because that's one of the things that you want to do when you're running a marathon. Break it down so it doesn't feel like it's 42.2 kilometres. So you break it down by like maybe it's the next aid station. Maybe it's the person in front of you. Maybe it's something else that you've noticed on the course. You know, I've just got to get to the bridge to cross over to get the other side you know, those sort of things, they're the little mental games that y you play because at, at some point we're all thinking the same thing. Why am I out here? Why am I doing this? I mean, that's natural. It doesn't matter if you're a professional athlete or, or, or you're an amateur athlete. And, and that's where, you know, I tell athletes, you know, you've got to keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. Stay in the moment. Keep focusing on everything you've done all day long. So that's sticking to your race plan, sticking to your nutrition plan, and getting yourself to the finish line any way you can. Yeah, that's right. And they've also enjoyed some uh, really good conditions out here today. So I think that be, uh, they can be very grateful that they've got a, a somewhat overcast uh, sky at the moment, which is going to help them immensely because the humidity was just starting to turn again. Now it's just going to go back the other way. So it was at 83% this morning. Got down to 59% during the middle of the day, but now it's just going to start kicking in the other way and um, start kicking back into gear. As the, uh, the temperature warms up as well, so 28 degrees out there as well. So pretty warm out there race, racing along the main right now. No, and we, we talked a little bit about the transition from the bike to the, to the run and the choices that you, you make. And, you know, Nikki decided to go through the change tent, put on more run gear because she doesn't normally race 
um, so it doesn't normally train in a tri, tri, uh, tri suit. So she she wanted to be what she was most comfortable with. Yeah, she lost like 35 seconds in the process, but that's a choice that you make. Yeah, so uh, we did talk to uh, Nikki Bartlett uh, about it all, and uh, here's a fighting chance with Nikki Bartlett. Hi, I'm Nikki Bartlett. I'm from the UK. I'm here to race. I'm on Frankfurt. Um, I've chosen this as my birthday race. Uh, what a better present to give to myself. Uh, I've never been to Germany. Um, yeah, I was working it out. I was like, I don't think I've actually been to Germany. Um, and I love big races. Uh, iconic course to come to. Like everyone's like, you've got to do Frankfurt in your time. And I was like, well, why not now? <laughs> so we've done some heat prep because we've heard about the freak heat waves here. So we've done a lot of heat prep because it's still cold in the UK. Well, we have some days where it goes to 25 and everyone's like, oh, it's boiling. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> I need to prepare for like, what, 35 plus sometimes this race can be. If anything, a really rocky winter has taught me is to just be happy. <laughs> um, happiness is key. Um, I do a lot of happiness choices in life, like training, events, like I go to events which really spark a lot of energy from, from myself and from the course. Um, and yeah, I think if you're struggling on, on the day, sometimes just give yourself a cheeky smile because <laughs> it's hurting, but everyone's hurting and, and we've done all the hard work to get here and it's actually the journey of getting to the race, which is special. So race day is almost that celebration. With a, being a pro long distance, you have to really create a team around you to like someone, if I'm like, oh my God, my bike's broke, I can call up a mechanic who we have a good relationship with and he'll just fix my bike and have a coach, a team, training partners around you. Um, that's really important um, to be successful because you're just a, a small part of a team, really. Run kit of choices, uh, I'm with Hoka, so um, I'll go for the Carbon Xs on the Hoka. Um, I'm actually going to get changed in T2, purely for com comfort of, yeah, just say wrong time of the month. <laughs> um, but also for the heat. Um, and like, I never go out for a run in my tri suit, so I thought, why, why am I not getting changed? So I'll have a, a run kit on, Carbon X's, headband for the, for the heat um, to help with, you know, if it's super hot like it could be today. What great insight from, from Nikki. You know, I think the biggest thing that I loved about that interview was actually two things. I like the fact that she talked about the team around her. You know, it's like so important to have that that team environment. And, and it's so true because, yeah, like w when you get preparing for an, an Ironman, you know, it, it is a team effort. When you're on the race course, it's an individual effort because you are the only one that can get yourself through the swim, bike and run. Um, the second thing, you know, we, we already talked about, and that's like being comfortable and being comfortable with what you're used to. And, you know, she talked about it, that being in her tri suit, she never runs in her tri suit. So, you know, we saw her change into her running attire. Yeah, lost like 35 seconds. Did that make or break or race? Absolutely not. But it'll definitely, as she said, you know, it's her comfort spot. Yeah, and you need to be in your comfort spot, uh, you know, especially when you're running a marathon and, and trying to get the job done. And, uh, you know, with Nikki, she's had a good uh, good event here today. She's uh, actually made up a couple more seconds on our leader, Danielle Blamel. She'd made up another four seconds. So she's down to about uh, four minutes and 30 seconds down at this point in time. She's running out of real estate, but we're not going anywhere. Don't you go anywhere either. See you on the other side. Whether it's on the road or in the pool, your activity has high demands. Rooted in sweat and grounded in science, we understand your unique fueling needs. That is why we created formulas just for you, endurance athletes, helping you replace what you're losing and keeping you fueled. And there's nowhere we'd rather be than with you along this journey, because together we are formulated for farther. 
from the creators of Gatorade. Gatorade Endurance, formulated for you, formulated for farther. Greg, we're watching the, the women's race right now. We've already crowned our men's European Championship. The women had their European Championship three weeks ago. So today we're actually going to be crowning the women's Ironman Frankfurt champion. And an athlete is also going to, one of the women's athletes are going to walk away with that coveted Kona slot so they can go and race the world championships in October. And it's been quite a few years since we've had the world championships in Kona. 2019 uh, didn't happen. So it's sure going to be nice to get back to the big island. And, you know, we did talk about how competitive the women's field is going to going to be and how many new faces that we have you know the quite a few athletes have never even been on the big island to race the world championship yeah that's right uh cat matthews being one of those uh, in our professional women's division and a lot of our athletes you know today um our men's uh, three slots are going to you know go to some athletes you know maybe clement uh you know uh, mignon's gonna end up you know taking one of those spots and heading over to kona at such a young age so it's, it's going to be great to see who actually takes those slots and, uh, you know, really wants to get into it and, you know, put their neck on the line coming up October 8 for the men and October 6 for our women. And, uh, you know, by the look of it, I, I think that Nikki Bartler, she's showing that she is in really, really good shape. I mean, she's really been, you know, doing well today, been rock steady on the run. As a matter of fact, you know, the last uh, couple of times, but she's taking out a second or two here and there. It's not really too much to, you know, start getting excited about taking the title. That's not going to happen. But it's a really good result for, um, you know, Nikki to know that she's uh, rock solid the whole way through and can be for 42 kilos which is, you know, t today's a, it's a warm day. It's not as warm as Kona. It's not as humid as Kona, but it, it's good, good, um, you know, experience to have a day like this right here, um, you know, 15 weeks out from Kona. Yeah, and she actually talked a little bit about heat prep mm -hmm. and, you know, especially coming off, you know, up what she felt was a poorer performance in, in St. George and... You know, she really feels like that heat prep is super important. And, you know, she has done some heat sessions since the George and when she did well at Marabello, uh, which were both like 34 degrees. So I think that definitely helped her when she got to the start line today for Frankfurt because we all know that Frankfurt can have those freaky heat waves out there. And today, lucky enough, you know, we do have a little bit of cloud cover we do have some humidity and it's still 26 degrees, so it's definitely not easy. And, and we saw a lot of that on the bike early, that the athletes were, were very, very conscious of going through those aid station, grabbing water and pouring it over the back, pouring it on their legs, pouring it on their, their crutch, because it's so important to get that core temperature down. And even though people say, oh, it was only blah, 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 you know, when you're actually racing in the moment, you know, they know what the conditions feel like. And, you know, it's the smart athletes that, that, that deal with those condi conditions that are presented on each race day. Yep, temperature uh, rushing up to that 28 degree level or uh, 81 degrees Fahrenheit as uh, Blamel just uh, slows down to a walk there to make sure that she gets all of the nutrition in that she needs because uh, for the final push, you would imagine that she's uh, wanting to get every possible opportunity of getting everything in there and down the hatch and just like that up and running again so just a nice little break you know just to uh just say hey listen my body just it wants something cold I, I just need to take a short break and just realize that it's not easy to you know walk through an aid station when you're in the lead of a race and it's you know it, it, it's sort of hard to slow down like that because you just don't know what you you know the deficit is to to second place at the same time so but anyway back on course right now there we go Frankfurt Deutschland on the 26th of June 81 Fahrenheit 27 Celsius right now clear skies with some uh, scattered clouds feels like 81 27 humidity is coming back up a little bit now so wind is still there I'm amazed that the wind has been you know so solid all day but the UV index is down as well at seven yeah definitely you know it's a little bit warmer than you know we thought we thought it would be around that 26 and you know Oh, it's only one degree, but, you know, every degree that I feel above 25 is significant, particularly in, a, in an Ironman race. And 
the organisers do a really, really job of making sure that the aid stations are exactly where you need them because, you know, as an athlete, when you're, you're racing in the heat, it's like you really rely on that aid and you don't want to overheat because you haven't made it to the next aid station in time. And that's why you started to see some of the athletes, when they were going through the aid station, they were keeping the sponges because sometimes, you know, even those, those aid stations are, are placed accordingly, sometimes your body's like, hey, you need to do something. I'm starting to overheat. So it's, it's a good precaution and it feels pretty good that, you know, you squeeze every little bit of ounce out of that sponge that you can. I mean, in Kona, you, you see a lot of the athletes, they will put ice down their chest, ice um, in their run caps, you know, it's a saving grace. And then sometimes you'll even see, you know, the athletes have the ice and, and they'll grab some ice and they'll suck on it. You know, anything to, to make you feel like you're cooling down, um, even if it's for a few seconds, has like a huge impact, not on you, just on you physically, but mentally as well, Greg. Yeah, that's uh, precisely right. And you know, uh, when when you mentioned uh, you know sucking on a you know piece of ice like that, it's great because it helps you you know just um, you know regulate your temperature. And and then secondly, it's just a, it's another way of just taking your mind off things. But um, I was always very diligent about you know going through those aid station, taking my hat off, getting the ice in the hat, putting it back on, putting it down my chest. Every aid station in Kona, I rarely did Ironman races outside of Kona anyway. But um, it was always there because the conditions were so brutal. You know that you needed to do that to, you know, just to be able to think right and, um, you know, to stay focused uh, 100% of the time, you know, in focus, uh, I'm sorry, in Kona was such a hard, you know, and disciplined thing to do. And, you know, that's what these ladies can do right now is they just have to put themselves in that mindset. They've got to stay strong mentally because at this point in time here, there's no time to lose because Dimity Lee Duke, she's making up some time on these ladies. I know that she's at 17 minutes down, but at last check, she was 10 seconds faster on the last kilometre. And now she's um, running 15 seconds faster per kilometre than our two leaders out here in first and second. No, and, you know, she, she, if she continues, you know, she definitely she's going to be excited about being on, on the podium. But we always talk about it and we've already talked about it. It's not over till it's over. And we're going to continue to, to watch and see if we see any weaknesses, if something major happens as we get that little countdown where we're going to be back in, in, in a few more minutes so we can continue to cover the women's pro field here in Frankfurt. Welcome back, Greg. Here we are. We are continuing to follow the women. Right now we're on Nikki Bartlett, who is in second place in the lead. Of course, we'll give you a little update with Danielle, Daniela Blimuth in first. And then we have the Aussie uh, Demony Lee uh, in third place. But, you know, it's been an interesting battle between our first and second athletes right now it's not like they've gotten any closer but it's not like they've moved any further apart you know except for the first part of this race where you know definitely the separation happened in the water and then definitely Daniela was stronger on the bike but there was parts of their bike where they both were riding like pretty consistently you know and they weren't really going any faster than each other and it's been the same on, on the run, and we keep saying that, 
But we say that because where's the motivation coming for each one of these athletes? And of course, winning here is huge motivation, particularly that it's Daniela's hometown race. And, you know, she recently had a baby. Uh, she's going to be so excited to cross that finish line in first place and get the support of, 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 of the German crowd, that's for sure. And then you've got someone like Nikki. Well, what's her motivation? Well, she's in second right now. How fantastic is, is that? You know, Kona slot on the line, we talked about that. Uh, I know Nikki's already qualified for the 70.3 World Championships in St. George later in the year. And, you know, she has finished in the top five before at 70.3 Worlds. So definitely, you know, she's going to say to herself at the end of this, does the Ironman path better for me? Or because I've done so well at 70.3, is that where my focus is going to be? But, you know, getting a chance to go to Kona and, and, and race at the World Championships in Kona, like how could you turn that down? Very difficult to turn that down. And uh, if I was these ladies, I would just put one foot in front of the other and get themselves to the finish line because they are getting after, you know, one spot here. And it can roll down if the others are, uh, you know, either qualified or, you know, are just going to actually say no to the Ironman World Championship and, and focus on something else. But, um, you know, as I look at it right now, Nikki Bartlett is at the 4.30 down. Um, she's trying to close in on the finish line. She's running exactly the same pace as our leader right now, Daniela Blamel. But Dimity Lee Duke, she's running at 4.16, so she's running 14 seconds a kilometre faster than the rest of the competition out here today. As they close in on the 39-kilometre marker with three kilometres to go, we're going to get that time split here any second, and we will give you an update just exactly what's happening throughout, uh, you know, the closing stages of our women's pro race here. But... Daniela Blamel has been really, really solid all day long. Had a good swim, came out in second place. On the bike, she really accelerated to the front. And look at this, the turnover's been there the whole time in the marathon. That time she didn't walk through the aid station, which is, uh, you know, just meaning that she's confident, you know, in her ability to, you know, just maintain that pace and uh, get herself to the finish line, you know, um, just fine. And that's what you need to do with those aid stations. You know, sometimes you need to walk through and make sure you're getting maybe the calories down or maybe you feel like you didn't get enough electrolytes in this time. So, you know, taking a few seconds to walk the aid station, you know, some athletes don't like doing that because then they feel like they can't get up to their pace again. It's a little more difficult. But, you know, that's part of the training process as well. Like often I'll have my athletes, you know, go out and do a transition run where, you know, Maybe it's one mile they have to run and then maybe it's 30, 20 second walk where they sort of take their nutrition in. So you sort of get used to that change of pace where you go from run, walk, run, walk because, you know, nutrition, as we say, is, is the fourth discipline. So, you know, just training that process. And what I like about those little walk breaks, it's sort of like, oh, I can make another mile, no problem. And, you know, if you ever get into that struggle in an Ironman where you're really, really struggling thinking that your legs can't do it, it's sort of like a little mental game that you can play. Okay, I'm going to run for this amount of time and then I'm going to have a little walk. And it's actually quite efficient. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, just making our way back out here. Blay, Blay Mel here, she's, uh, you know, sitting in a great position, already going through that 39.3 kilometre marker, 8.48 on the race clock right now. She has around about 12, 12 and a bit minutes uh, to run here. So we'll see that uh, if she can break that nine hour barrier, it's going to be touch and go out there today. But here with, uh, you know, Blay Mel, she has had a good race and she's been pushed, you know, the whole way. You know, unfortunately for her, you know, training partner, we, we have to go back and talk about it one more time. But, you know, Caroline uh, Leilider, she was out there for the longest amount of time, you know, in the lead off the swim. And then Blame Mel caught up, you know, in the early parts of the bike ride, but they swapped leads, you know, on the on the first lap of the bike. But at the end of the second lap, it was the technical, um, you know, aspect that got to, um, you know, well, got the better of 
lead rider and she is now out of the race. So now she was, uh, you know, just reduced to herself instead of, you know, her and her training partner. So Blaine Mel doing very, very well at this point of the race here. Smiling or grimacing, I don't know what it is, but I think that she's really hurting. She's just trying to edge toward that finish line right now. That was the guy that she's been running with quite a long time on the left that's out of screen right now that's gone ahead. So I think that um, by the look of it, that stride is definitely shortening up a, a bit there. And you can see that in the dying moments here, Daniela Blamel is just uh, trying to get to their finish line. You know, the marathon's hard, let's face it. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in first place or you're in 10th place, you know. It, at some point, you know, it's like you try to hide it as much as you can. And sometimes, you know, you can put your race face on and nobody knows what's happening. But, you know, th as commentators, this is what we're looking for. We're looking to see, okay, where's the weakness right now? W what's the chance of Nikki Barclett catching Danielle Blimeth? I mean, that's what we're looking for. And, and definitely, you know, the stride is getting a little shorter. It's definitely not as fluid as it, it, it was. Definitely you talked about, like, the grimace. She's definitely not as relaxed and focused. And, you know, when something's hurting, you know, even like a small blister, there's only so much you can sort of ignore that sort of pain because, you know, you, you can talk about endorphins and how you can, like, go through anything, but sometimes you just can't. So, you know, there is definitely something bothering Daniela right now just from her posture, on her run technique and, you know, the emotion in the face. Well, i got some big news for you. The, the lead has come right down. It's now three minutes. So, uh, you know, over the last uh, kilometre and a half, it came down significantly. So you can do tell, you know, um, you know, Nikki Bartlett there on the right-hand side of the screen that the stride length is still the same as it's been all day. But definitely for our race leader right now, the, you know, it's real. The struggle is real. And she's just trying to get one foot in front of the other at this point in time. It's a grimace on the face. It's not a smile. This is tough. This is Ironman triathlon. And she's doing what champions do. And and she is fighting gallantly. She is fighting for a race win. She is fighting for the title here of Ironman Frankfurt champion on our women's pro division. And she's giving it everything that she's got. But look at Nikki, look at Nikki Bartler. She is thrusting her upper body toward that finish line. She is driving those knees and the hips toward that finish line. But Blaymel, with the grimace on her face, is just summoning all sorts of energy at this point in time. But it's Blaymel at the moment. The ball is in her court and it's all going to come down to the final couple of kilometres with only three minutes to separate these two women here with inside of three kilometres to go. Is it going to come down to the finish line or is the German going to take it for the first time since 2011? It's heating up right here in Frankfurt. Do not go away. This is going to be a thrilling finish in Frankfurt. John Moran has, that's a hypervolt. That thing he uses to warm up and stay loose before he throws it down. That thing Tony Finau uses on course between shots. Ooh, that's money. That thing Robin and I use before and after we're on the bike so we can ride harder tomorrow. That thing Erlen Holland uses before smashing it into the back of the net. That thing that's for everyone. The hypervolt from Hyperice. Give your body the daily relief it's been asking for. And this is the women's race at Ironman Frankfurt. Right now we have Nikki Bartlett, who, who is definitely putting some screws down on our women's leader, Daniela Blimeth. So this is actually the first time that we've seen Daniela show some weakness. You know, for a long time, it was around that four-minute mark between first and second. Now it's dropped down to three minutes we see the weakness in Daniela that her stride is getting shorter. Uh, her face expression is definitely changed. 
And she definitely looks like, you know, she doesn't have that beautiful, nice swing that she had through the shoulders um, at the beginning of the marathon. So, you know, there's still probably like three kilometres left, four kilometres. So no, we're if, in, no, we're inside of that now. We're, yeah, we're yeah. inside of three, yeah, 3K to go. But I, I, I do believe that Blame Hell, you know, just after we were talking about that, she's starting to look okay again. I, I, I do notice that a little bit of, of uh, a hurried stride again, so which is great. Uh, you know, when, when we were covered by the canopy and trees just a moment ago on the other surface, you know, it's definitely the struggle was there. Now that she's getting a little bit closer, edging away to that uh, finish line, I think that she's getting a sniff of it. And, you know, the victory is going to be even that much better if she gets there in a hurry because she knows that she's got someone breathing down her neck. She knows that she's got the Frankfurt title on the line and she knows that she wants to, you know, win this race so bad and now she's getting up onto the uh, onto the bridge here. So, you know, that she's gone up and over that ramp to get up there and this will be a sight for her because now after this uh, bridge, she'll be all a little bit downhill off the ramp and then on the floor before the finish line. But just to get you uh, updated, you know, like we were talking about, it was 3.03 at 39.3 um, kilometres, but we're now looking for our next split, which is going to happen any second now. So Blaine Mel is now leading Dimity Lee Duke. Um, uh, sorry, Nikki Bartlett by 3.03. Dimity Lee Duke is uh, sitting just over 17 minutes in arrears. But look at Nikki Bartlett still looking very, very strong. Yeah, definitely if we we had a split screen right now and saw these two athletes running, it's it's obvious that Nikki is running faster. I mean, that's why the, obviously why the time... I hate to state the obvious, but that's why the time is, is dropping, you know, less than like two kilometres to, to run for our leader and maybe I'm thinking about 0.5 kilometres uh, behind is Nikki Bartlett. So she she's going to sort of get an idea that she's gaining. And then when you look at Daniela, she's going to get an idea that she's losing. But then every step that Daniela gets closer to that finish line, she's just going to push herself if she's able just that, that little bit. And I think you just talked about that. That's that second win that she got. You know, you felt like she was looking a lot better than she did like a few minutes before that. And that's like using the motivation of the course to, to get you to the finish line. Just get yourself home any way you, you can. And that's exactly what Danielle is doing right now. She's really digging into that past experience and that knowledge that, you know what, I just got to keep moving forward. I've got to take a big deep breath. I got to stay relaxed. And I think that's exactly what's happening because she, she, as you said, you know, she's even looking better than a few minutes ago. She does. And that's the energy too from yeah. the crowd. Yeah, she, she knows and, um, you know, she, she is the hometown girl. And there's a lot on her shoulders. It's hard to carry the weight of a city. And, you know, she is from Darmstadt, but, you know, she's considering herself, you know, the local girl. And, and she is. I mean... Darmstadt is not that far away, and this is her home race. Look at the grimace. That is real. She has really picked it up now. She is wanting to bring it home, and she knows that the finish line is right up ahead. Look at this. I think it's now yeah. become a smile. It was a grimace just a moment ago, but now the energy has returned. The zipper is up, and she knows that she's got it. She's got a lot of people out on the sidelines today helping her out, supporting her as she makes her way toward that Ironman Frankfurt crown, the crown that she has never Never won before, and a German woman has not won this event since 2011 with Sandra Vollenhorst when she went back to back. Blay Mel now has found another piece of energy in a stride as now it is Nikki Bartlett that's found the bridge for the very last time. And to be coming off that bridge, she is only three minutes down, but the split is coming up here pretty soon. I think she's going to run out of real estate with only what, one and a half kilometers to run. I think it's all Blaymel. Mel. It's all her race to win or lose at this point in time. But I think that Bartlett is running out of real estate quickly. Definitely, that it looks like that that is going to happen. There's just going to be not enough real estate. And, you know, this is where the hometown advantage is playing its part right now. It's like she's getting lots of cheers from the crowd. You saw her blowing kisses. You know, that energy is just going to propel her to the finish line. And, you know, she's getting so close. And then she's going to start to hear, hear the crowd at the finish line. She's going to see it. You know, then those 
applause of everyone, you know, this is going to get her across the, across the line. There's no doubt about it. So for her, for her right now, the only thing that is on her, her mind is let's get there as fast as we can so we can call her the champion here in Frankfurt. Well, just missing out on that magical nine-hour barrier. She's going to be happy with the race win today, but finding an extra little bit of a pep in the step right now, that is Daniela Blamel. And it's never easy to compete on home soil, never easy to compete on your home race uh, course here right now with lots of people coming down to visit and lots of people there supporting her well. She's not going to let any one of those down today because she's going to take the crown as she makes her way now toward the Romaplatz and the smile is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Nikki Bartlett is running out of space, but she is smiling as well. Look at that. Nikki Bartlett pulls the number around to the front. She's got a little bit extra in a stride as well, or a couple of inches by the look of it. This is great news for our two women, giving it absolutely everything right down to the closing moments of the run course today. What a gallant effort it has been by Daniela Blamel, and she is going to be very emotional getting across the finish line today. She'll become an Ironman champion for the first time as a mother. And this is going to be absolutely fantastic. It sure is, Greg. You know, the, the emotion is already seeping in. We've talked about she's blown some kisses. You know, she got some cheers from the other age group athletes as she heads down the finishing chute. And this crowd is going, going to go nuts. You have a German female about to cross the finish line, hometown, yes, yeah, celebrating motherhood, her victory as a mother, you know, so many awesome things. You know, she's going to be so excited as she high fives people as she comes down the finish line. Like what a day for her, you know, second out of the water, first um, not far into the bike, found herself in the lead on the run as well. And, you know, she's just put one foot in front of the Anna, in front of the other, and she's going to be our 2022 Ironman Frankfurt Women's World Champion. Well done. There we go. For the first time since 2011, this is Daniela Blamel from Germany taking the crown. Yes, the first time since Sandra Vollenhorst won the race, and it is real. This is a very, very tough day. She's exhausted, just needs to lay down just for a little bit here. She gave it absolutely everything. She exhausted herself out on the last few kilometres of the run course today. And as we come to a close, Nikki Bartlett gave it a great shake. She gave it everything. The Pace was just not enough in the end, but it's going to come down to within about the two minute barrier. So they was very, very close at the very end of the race today. You know that she's gonna have the fastest run here today. That is of Nikki Bartlett, but look at that. The smile is right there. She knows she's got it. She's gonna make that right hand turn. Up the red carpet she goes to the cheering fans of this incredible Roma Plants today and uh, be able to come in second place at the Ironman Frankfurt Championship here for Nikki Bartlett from the UK as Daniela Blamel is absolutely physically exhausted getting across that finish line. Nikki Bartlett in second place, McKeeley, she is doing awesome. Yeah, definitely a big contrast between these two athletes. You know, we, we, we saw Daniela like started to show weakness the last few miles of the run. So what a fantastic effort on, on her part to get herself first across the finish line. And then we have Nikki Bartlett, who had a fantastic steady race all day. She's not going to be disappointed today with, with second place. Fantastic effort, solid all, all rounds, particularly on the bike. You know, Danielle did sort of put some time into her, but on the run, she's going to be the fastest runner out there today. And, you know, the crowd, you know, is recognising the effort. And, and in the end, how close was this women's race? I mean, we didn't think that was going to happen. But, you know, in the end, Nikki did actually get within two minutes of our leader, probably the closest they got together all day long. So a fantastic effort for, for Nikki to finish so strong. And congratulations on her performance today. 
Rallying up the crowd right now, Nikki Bartler from the UK just ran out of real estate here, just pulled up a touch short, but in the end, it's good enough for second place for the UK athlete, Nikki Bartlett, as she makes her way across the line today. Second place at the main over, Ironman Frankfurt European Championship for our men, and for the Frankfurt Championship for our women today with a 3.07.47 run. Way to go, Nikki Bartlett, and way to go to bring it home today. Just fell that little a little bit short there, McKeeley. Not as exhausted getting across the finish line as our champ today, Daniela Blamel. But I tell you what, these women gave it everything. They laid it out on the line. They were tremendous. They fought the hard conditions out on the bike with the wind and the course and made a few adjustments to the course this year. And what a great event it was for our women. But look at that, Daniela now just acknowledging <laughs> Nikki. Oh my gosh, they must be just so exhausted. No, it just shows you that they push themselves. You know, Daniela had to had to really push hard the last few miles. Uh, and, but what a great performance from both of them. You know, they had their ups and downs all day. You know, even that, that time gap was, you know, pretty similar all day long in the end. It was Nikki that came home a little bit stronger, but not enough to overcome Daniela. That's for sure. Yeah, the difference today was just a little bit in the swim, you know, whereas uh, Nikki Bartlett swam, you know, one hour, whereas uh, Blamel was, you know, down at that 38 and a half. Then you look at the bike splits, it was a 446 by Blamel, and it was a 450, you know, for Nikki Bartlett. But the big story of the day was that Nikki Bartlett just you know, came up just a little bit short with a 3.07.47 and it was a 3.11.59 for Daniela Blamel to take out the Frankfurt Championship today. And for Germany, it's going to be a day that they will celebrate well into the night because it was the first time since 2011 that a German woman has won their home race. Fantastic effort to see um, the German athlete of... Stanley Blymouth performing in her hometown. I mean, this was her goal. Come and race hometown, get across that finish line first. And that's exactly what she, what she did today. And, you know, we talked about, you know, she took control fairly early in the race. Fantastic, steady effort on the swim, the bike and the run. You know, that's where she lost a little bit of time at the end. Otherwise, her run split would have been very, very close to Nikki Bartlett, our second place finisher. But, you know, Nikki Bartlett, look, what a, what a great race for her as well. You know, she never gave up. She just stayed like steady all day long. And she just, at the end, was just a little bit fresher than Daniela. But Daniela did what she needed to do. She needed to get herself across the finish line. She started to struggle a little bit, but she pulled herself together. I'm sure the super crowd here in Frankfurt helped with that. I'm sure they were screaming encouragement. And then she had a fantastic effort. She got a, she rallied herself up to get to the finish line and she finished strong in the end. Yeah, it really did. And uh, it was great to see that that uh, age group athlete was you know right behind there and just uh, allowing you know, the cheerleaders and everyone to have their moment there before he actually got across the line. So great sportsmanship there. But Daniela Blamel, wow, what a great race by her today as we look at the uh, the replay here. It really took everything for Blamel to get the victory. You know, she got it by just a few minutes. And at the end of the day, that's all it really takes because when you end up winning these races, it is about getting to the finish line. In first place, with a gap of who cares, it was two minutes and 26 seconds today. Good enough for the win over this young lady right here, Nikki Bartlett, with a big smile on her face. Uh, yep, and some very, very cold sponges. <laughs> it's almost like a shockwave went through the system there. I'm sure it feels really good though, because you know, we, we saw Daniela the total opposite, right? She basically collapsed at the finish line. You know, we, we knew she needed to use every piece of energy she had to maintain that lead, even though, you know, it was she was steady all day and she sort of held like a nice buffet. But in the end, it was her true grit and spirit that got across the line in first place. 
And expecting to get across the finish line next would be Dimity Lee Duke from Australia. And she is coming in expected in the next six and a half or seven minutes time from now as we look down the river main and uh, absolutely gorgeous today as we see the, the financial district of Frankfurt just really turning on a splendid day. A call for light showers in the early part of the day. Doesn't look like we're going to get those today as we see a steady stream of athletes. Age group is just heading out onto their laps right now. Some of them yakking away. Some of them having conversation. You can see the lady there in the black, green and white. She's just happy to be out there making friends and kissing babies and hugging strangers. I don't know if she's a politician or an Ironman athlete. But anyway, you can see Dimity Lee Dick uh, right there in the blue and uh, the pink number on the back there as she makes her way. She's just hustling those arms together, getting those legs, just shuffling them all the way down toward that finish line. The last bridge to go over. She's got a downhill and then she'll make her way into the rummer plot. So our next athlete, our third overall in our women's division will be sorted out in just a few moments. And Greg, you know, we haven't talked a lot of, about her because definitely, you know, she was one of those athletes that just had to move uh, and keep moving forward from the, the back of the pack. But, you know, that's what you need to do to get on the podium. It's like you never know what's happening at the front of the race. You've just got to stick to your race plan. And, and we see it a lot. You know, sometimes we're, when we're talking about people, you know, all of a sudden we start mentioning someone that we haven't mentioned them all day long because all of a sudden it's like, oh, my goodness, here they are. You know, maybe it's their strongest leg. You know, things happened up the road and you know, they benefit for that. And that's why you can never give up in an Ironman because you, you never know what's happening with the other athletes that you're racing against. That's correct. And there is Dimity Lee Duke just coming down the ramp right now, as we see from Australia in third position at this point in time. Make that left-hand turn and then she'll up the uh, up the main for the one last time and then up the ramp onto the uh, onto the road before she makes that right-hand turn into the finish line here at the Minova Ironman Frankfurt European Championship on what has been a great day. Today we've had our new Ironman European Champions crown on our men's side of things and uh, Dennis Chavreau was nothing short of amazing. What a great run he had today, breaking that 240 barrier. That just seems like the norm, uh, you know, these days on the men's uh, side of things. But Timothy Lee Duke, she's going to um, come in with a very, very strong marathon time as well. But let's uh, not you know, veer too far away from, you know, uh, Wilco Wiraki from uh, Poland today because it was also the first time that Poland, outside of France, that were on top of the, well, on the podium at the European Championship. And as a matter of fact, first time that they've been on the podium at the Ironman Frankfurt race as well. No, exactly. The men's race was super competitive. We saw so many lead changes. I mean, right down to the end of the marathon, it was like we were, I was biting my nails, like trying to see, well, okay, what's going to happen? Okay, we, we think we know who's going to win and then it would change. And then we're like, oh, who's going to get a second? And then it was like, oh my goodness, who's going to get third? So a great race. And, you know, the women's race, it, it was similar, but very, very different in the fact that, you know, we had a much smaller field, so we could definitely key on a couple of athletes and Daniela Blumuth did a great job of getting herself across the finish line as she struggled the last few miles. And then, of course, we had Nikki Bartlett, who was just steady and all day long and made up time in the end. And then now we're watching Dimity Lee Duke duke it out for, for, for third. And, you know, <laughs> well she's done. duking out the elements right now. I'm, like, getting on to... To, to your little paraphrases, but <laughs> she looked quite comfortable. Two ladies at the Mine of Ironman Championship here today. And uh, first up, our winner, congratulations, Daniela Blymail. You look slightly tired. How happy are you on the inside? I think very happy, but uh, I need to, yeah, find back my, uh, my balance first. <laughs> Fair enough. You had a bit of a hectic start this morning into the race. When we saw you, you looked a little nervous. What happened? Well, um, I think uh, that it's my home race was, was not an advantage this time. I uh, forgot my sh bike shoes at home <laughs> because yesterday I put them somewhere where I would definitely not forget them because I didn't want my baby to uh, put them away and then somehow this morning they were not there and then yeah, a little bit panic. <laughs> or quite a lot of panic um, yeah but luckily they were 
back for bike. <laughs> You got them back. That was a good thing. And then you put it out there. It was a tough fight out there. How hard was the win earned today? Uh, it was very hard because I, yeah, to be honest, didn't feel good at all. Uh, already on the bike in the second loop, I had stomach problems and had to yeah, slow down. And um, on the run, the same. The last three loops were just, uh, yeah, I. I couldn't even, uh, I mean, I heard my name so often, but I couldn't uh, show any reaction because I was just focusing on every step and yeah, it was. Well, I think our viewers can see it from out there. You left everything on the course. Congratulations. Great to have you here in Frankfurt. Thank you. Thank you to everyone cheering on the course. It was amazing, yeah. yeah. And uh, straight into... Oh. Here she is, the Aussie, Dimity Lee Duke, about to get on the podium. So Dimity Lee Duke from Australia now makes her way into third place at the mine over Ironman Frankfurt. We see that Daniela Blamel has taken the crown. First time in 11 years for the German women and in second place. What a gallant effort by Nikki Bartler from the UK for claiming third spot. The bronze medal is going out to Australia's Dimity Lee Duke. She's ecstatic with the result. She's going to have a great marathon time. You know that she came down from a ways. But this is absolutely brilliant. This is what it's all about. Look at that, the positivity, the happiness on the face of Dimity Lee Duke coming across the line in third place in our pro women's division at the mine over Ironman Frankfurt right here today for the Australian. Good enough for third. Wow, McKeeley, that was a great finish. Very, very happy and uh, I tell you what, very proud of her. Super, super pumped, I would say as we see Daniela with her, 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 her baby. What a fantastic, like, later on down the road that she'll get to celebrate. And her, her daughter may not know what's happening now, but definitely <laughs> when, the, when, when that video gets played over and over and over again, what a proud mum she's going to be and definitely a proud daughter to see her mum achieving what she achieved today. And, you know, we heard her say, Daniela Glimmer said, you know, this is not an easy day for her. And, you know, and that's what it's about, you know, even if it's a good day or a bad day, you know, you, you do what you need to do to get across that finish line. And, and the bonus was, you know, she struggled, but she still ended up uh, winning the race here today. And the one thing that we didn't know was that, you know, the fact that Daniela, um, you know, Blamel left her bike shoes uh, at home before she got to the race today. So, you know, fortunately, uh, the bike shoes were on the bike and uh, ready to go once they got, uh, you know, out of the water. So lucky for her and what a great day here in Frankfurt. It just goes to show, Greg, that you never know what happens and, you know, everyone's human and we forget some things sometimes. Just standing by for the interview now with Dimity uh, Lee Duke and also Nikki Bartlett down there in second place today. So uh, we'll be hearing from those two momentarily as we see another athlete getting across that line. That is the Roma Platz. That is so famous down here in Germany. And you know that's going to get wild in a couple of hours from now. Lots of the athletes, you know, uh, sorry, the spectators will go back out on the course. But let's go down to the interviews now. Well, congratulations. Big smile on your face and a smile we saw the entire run course. It almost looks like it didn't hurt out there. No, it really did hurt. Um, but the crowds here are like no other. Like, the Germans know how to throw a pie, um, and that's just what get, got me around that run course, really. I felt really good the first two laps, and then, like, both my hamstrings just, like, completely seized up, and it's almost like I couldn't really lift my legs properly, so I was like, God, I can't even fully, like, access my run. <laughs> um, but no, like, I, I enjoyed it out there. It, what a day, and I can see why people say this is an iconic bucket list race, um, and I can't wait to come back again. So what you're saying is the crowds were so good that despite racing at a for a Kona spot basically here, uh, you had time to soak in the atmosphere? Luckily I've got, I've got my Kona spot, so it goes to me too. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Sorry, what did you actually ask again? <laughs> oh, the atmosphere, yeah, amazing. Like, that finish line is probably the best finish line I've ever been down. Like, I, li I actually think I got goosebumps, and I know that's not from being cold, because <laughs> it's <is> boiling. <laughs> uh, that's great to hear. I mean, it's an amazing crowd. They were really cheering for you while you were on the run course. We had you on the split screen there. In the end, it looked like it was a tough fight. And what kept you going? 
again, the atmosphere, the crowds. Uh, my other half, uh, who's also my coach, uh, she's here, like, just following me around. And I just know everyone back home is going to be cheering me on. And I just know, like, when I go for a time and chip mat, they'll be like, oh, there she is, there she is. Um, so that kind of stuff really keeps you going because you've got to keep your mind occupied for a long day. Like, I still can't get my head around this long, long Ironman stuff. <laughs> I hear you about that, absolutely. Congratulations, great to have you here in Frankfurt. Thanks again, and thanks everyone who supported volunteers, crowds, staff, everyone. <laughs> from Australia captures third place there absolutely over the moon let's go down to her right now congratulations for everybody who saw you cross the finish line now we headed out in the world you look ecstatic how happy are you right now yeah look it's a bit of a frustrating day and it's been a roller coaster of emotions the last 18 months like my dad's got leukemia diagnosed in March I got sick in December, I got COVID. Yeah, it's just been like a huge roller coaster. And to come back and to have my first Ironman in like, I don't know, two years or something, and get a penalty and just fight adversity, I'm like pretty, pretty pumped. I can't, I can't complain. How much energy were you able to draw out of those setbacks and put into the race here today? Yeah, I just, I just had to keep my cool, like, that's my biggest, like, was my biggest downfall in the past. Is just I was getting frustrated by things, and I guess, I guess these things that have happened is a reality check, and you've got to put life into perspective. And yeah, look, you know, I'm very grateful that I can be here against some wonderful girls and a wonderful crowd. And I love Germany, and I love the people, and I've got so many, many people here, so I can't thank them enough. Hey, we're so happy you're here. Congratulations. We're very excited for you as well. Third place. Great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, everybody. Well, absolutely fantastic to, um, you know, hear that the struggles are real with the athletes. You know, it's not easy ever. You know, when you have, you know, family issues like that, then contracting COVID yourself and then to have to wait, you know, in, during the pandemic to come back and to race. What a great day for Dimity, Lou Duke, uh, Dimity Lee Duke from Australia to come back in third place. The pressure's off now. She's off to Kona anyway. And uh, she's got the rest of, you know, uh, rest of the month to sort of have a little bit of a break. All right, so on the other side of the break, we're going to come back and recap our race here. Don't go away. We'll be right back from the main over. Frankfurt Ironman right here, the Ironman European Championship, which has already been a run and won. We'll be right back. So the athletes now in the hyper ice recovery zone, enjoying what was a incredible day. And now the emotions are now flowing. That is Daniela Blamel as she now celebrates with her little one there. And what a great day with a 902.55 showing her lovely little daughter. Yep, that was mummy's time there today, McKeely. 
Yeah, and what an emotional day for her as a mum. And then, you know, the emotion that Jiminy Lou, Lee Duke as well. Like, fantastic to see them sharing, you know, what drives them, what motivates them. And nice to see, you know, athletes turn it around, whether it's motherhood or COVID or, you know, an illness in the family. Yep, that's right. So now it is time to uh, focus our attention back onto the race recap today for our men's race that started earlier this morning. And uh, we'll go back to that in just a little bit from now. So I think, Greg, before we hit that, we're actually going to wait for the women's ceremony. It may take us a little bit to, to, to get that. They're just getting organised down there at the Hyper Ice Recovery Zone. So we'll just wait for them to uh, show us exactly what's happening. <laughs> we're seeing what you're ha seeing out there. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be such a huge celebration for these three, three women, you know, all different types of races for each one of these athletes today. You know, we had one that was in the front of the race very, very early. Um, and then we had somebody who was steady all day and like slowly at the end, almost, you know, edged back. And then you had someone that, you know, we didn't talk a lot about um, early on, but then just got herself together. And I think, I think the perfect words that she said is, you know, patience, you know, and, and I think that's what Iron Man essentially is all about. It's, it's being patient all day long. And I think both, actually all three of our athletes had to show some sort of patience out on the course, whether it, it was the fact the last part of the, the course for our winner, Daniela, you know, she struggled. And then she also mentioned she had stomach issues, but, you know, she was patient and she ended up with the title anyway. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, just leave it up to me to jump the gun, just like our women today at the start there, to <laughs> try and rush off to our race recap. We're going to go over to our women's podium momentarily here is, uh, as soon as we get our ladies ready for that. But the age groupers are going to be streaming into the finish line well into the night today. You can see our cheerleaders. They'll be there all night as well. And that's a marathon for them, to say the least. But what a great race that we had this morning. Oh, my goodness me, we had some great weather. The wind was consistent consistent but outside of that it was absolutely fantastic but I tell you what the women they really had a battle royale in the end there and it was very very difficult for our winner to even just get across that finish line I think the heat was really proving to be one of those factors today that was really really tough and you know we did notice that on on, on the bike that you know there was extra precautions taken fairly early on the bike of making sure they were saying cool but Greg it looks like we're about to head down to our celebration of the women's podium winners today for the 2022 Minova Ironman Frankfurt. As we said before, it was only the European Championships for the men. Today, the title is Ironman Frankfurt winner. That's right, Nikki Bartlett there getting the silver medal this there and uh, being presented with her athletic brew as well and her flowers. Then it will be Daniela Blameth. And uh, well, what a race today it was from our New mother there, and uh, Daniela should be very, very proud of herself. And then, you know, the struggle was absolutely visible, you know, from that last five kilometres on the run. But she did say in her interview that the uh, second lap on the bike, she was struggling with her nutrition. It was hard to keep down. And uh, so, you know, she had to really resort to, um, you know, her experience, and it came through in the end. No, it certainly did. And, you know, she, she definitely dug deep got herself together, she was losing time. But, you know, that's what it's about, you know, just keep moving, dig deep when you need to, especially when you're so close to home. You know, it would have been a huge disappointment if she had not been here on top of the podium in her hometown race of the Ironman Frankfurt today. Well, Nikki Bartlett looked like, uh, looking like she's ready for the after party, that's for sure. So. Uh... Anyway, uh, that was great to see. And Daniela is, uh, you know, visibly very, very tired there. She can barely get those flowers up in the air. And uh, what a great race. She left it all out there on the course today. So Nikki uh, Bartlett in second place, uh, just right there with Timothy Lee Duke. And also Daniela Blameth just uh, really struggling to get off that uh, podium right now. So what a great day, McKeely. It was awesome to watch. We all started out there so early this morning right down here at the Langan of Old Sea, and it was a great day for everybody involved.
It was, Greg. Like, what a fantastic performance by the women as well as our men who walked away with European titles today. So many lead changes in the men. And then, you know, the women, it was like we thought it was over and then the final closing kilometres, it, it, it almost came down to, to the wire. Yeah, it was a couple of minutes, but it's like Daniela had to really dig deep. Well, let's take this opportunity right now to go and check it out. The race recap right here. So it all started out this morning with our men. They were after the Ironman Frankfurt, the European Championship, and it was a great start. And our men got off to it in the two-loop course here. Shorter, sh you know, shaping around like a boomerang there, McKeely, a 1,600-metre loop on the first part and a 2.4-kilometre loop on the second part. It was there. Right there, yellow fluoro hat. That was Patrick Nielsen. He got caught up in a little bit of a tangle like in the early part of it. Got off to a great start, but then he had to, he made his struggles real the whole day. Then it was out onto the uh, bike course today. Andrew Turner from the UK really turned up the heat. He certainly did, Greg. He turned it up for, for a long time. But, the, you know, it was interesting to see what happened in, in the men's race. And then it was Boris Stein. He only had five kilometres to go on the bike ride when his chain slipped off over the front there, hopping off the bike, losing about 35 seconds of momentum and time on the side of the road. But he was not denied coming off the bike in first place and out there on the Hoka uh, Time to Fly run course. And Boris Stein, he was out there for quite some time, but he had company on the run today. No, he certainly did, but... To me, he was the one that shook up the race. He had the biggest impact today. Then it was uh, our fast charging. Dennis Chavro, the eventual winner here, just overtaking uh, Paul Schuster of Germany, where Schuster led for quite some time. But then it was uh, Robert here and uh, Robert uh, Wilke Wilecki from uh, Poland uh, that was in the race uh, right at the very end there, getting in, into that second place and not giving it up. But it was this young man, Clemente, Clemente Mignon in his first Ironman race, overtaking Paul Schuster from the very last kilometer Kilometers, the closing kilometres in the run course to uh, edge onto the podium. No, what a fantastic like fight for that third place podium today. But this was the guy today, our European Ironman Frankfurt champion. He was not going to be denied, denied the chance of this European championship. And Dennis Chavro, just after, you know, just walking away from his coach of a long time, struggled to get the motivation to come here and wins the Ironman European Championship in second place. It was Wukalowiecki uh, uh, from Poland and then Clemente Mignon in, from France in third place. So two Frenchmen take first and third in the Ironman European Men's Championship. And how awesome, four guys under eight hours. Fantastic effort from, from all those athletes today. Four under eight, like fantastic. Yeah, Paul Schuster, unfortunately, the uh, the German in the top five there was unable to pull it out in the end, but it was all Dennis Chavro today in first place, taking out the Ironman European Championship. That was our men's recap, and let's go over to our women's now. So we see that Daniela Blaymel in the orange cap was leading out, and the pink cap, or then the violet cap right behind, was Catherine at Lee Rider right there. And it wasn't too long before Lee Rider overtook Blaymel for the lead on this. But Blaymel got off to a great start. No, she certainly did. And her teammate was first out. Unfortunately, she had a mechanical. She did give Danielle a little bit of a run for her money early on the, on the bike, but then it was all Danielle of Blymouth. You know, she powered away unbeknownst to us until the end. She actually had nutritional issues on the bike and really struggled. And, and then we saw Nikki Bartlett come up through the field. Uh, very steady effort all day long for her. And that's how she ended up on the podium in second. I think because she was solid on the bike, it, it really made a div big difference as we saw Daniela Blymouth transition into the bike run in first place. 
seeing how hot it is. It uh, was really getting warm out there on the marathon, but getting off the bike, she was feeling the heat already, trying to get that helmet into the bag there, struggling ever so much. Then it was in uh, in second place to um, you know get off the bike there right now. And uh, Nikki Bartler was uh, just really, really strong all day long, but she was just a little bit further back than where she wa had anticipated starting out on the marathon, but they wasted no time to get into their stride. No, exactly. I mean, these women were battling it out. You know, one would gain two seconds, one would lose three seconds, but in the end, it was Daniela Blinth who really gutted it out today. You know, she, she got herself to the finish line. It was all about just getting there. It was pure grit and guts today for her. And that gets Germany back onto the top podium of their women's field there. And there's Nikki Bartlett coming in second place from the UK. And that was great at a 9.05. So we're just behind, just over two minutes behind our race leader, running out of real estate at the very end. And Australia's Dimity Lee Duke, you know, with struggles personally and with health issues, she made her way back after two years and ends up in third place on the podium right here at the main over Ironman. Man Frankfurt European Championship for 2022, celebrating 20 years right here in Frankfurt. It's been an absolutely fantastic day. We're going to say so long for right now, but stay tuned with our live coverage all the way up to midnight tonight on our live cameras, McKeeley. Yeah, what a great day. I just can't say enough of how fantastic this men's race was, the fight for the European Championships. We saw so many lead changes, but in the end, it was the Frenchman. Jen, uh, Dennis Chavot, who was the winner, under eight hours. And then, Greg, we also had Clement Mignon, another Frenchman, rounding out the podium in, in third. And definitely Robert Wilkenikovic. Like, fantastic effort on him. But I do feel sorry for poor Schuster. He was in the lead. He was second. He was third. Then he was fourth. But under eight hours for all four of them. Christian Hogan, how tops our, our top five here uh, with an 8.03. But if you look at those uh, four gentlemen on the on the podium there, <laughs> look at that. It's seven minutes, not even seven minutes separating four. And that's exactly how you would imagine an Ironman European Championship panning out at the end of the day. Very hardly fought, hardly contested, and a great day for Daniela Blamel as she brings Germany another victory here, the first time since 2011 for our German women with a 9.02.50. Nikki Bartlett in second, Dimity Lee Duke in third, and getting across the line in fourth place, Katharina Grohlman with a 9.28. Yeah, fantastic effort from all our podium finishers in our top five today. Just fantastic to be here at the 20th running of Ironman Frankfurt and to be crowning a European men's champion. Fantastic, Greg. Yep, that's right, McKeeley. So on behalf of McKeeley Jones, I'm Greg Welch and all of our production team right here saying so long from Frankfurt. We will see you next time. Let it on out.